We're gonna start shortly, folks. Yeah, the twinsy one is the best one. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> we'll just have to be twinsy. I'm okay with that. Cinder, you good? Mm -hmm. Cinder, can you do a voice check? I think it's not working. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's okay. Oops, disable. Okay, scripts are disabled, and I think we're gonna get started. You know, funny thing about that that particular. Where's Lassie? Has not come back from relogging. Just came back on the region. Oh, okay. We'll start as soon as Lassie gets up here. Sorry for the delay, folks. <laughs> this is nothing. Like, when we have our dev meetings, we're like a half an hour, 45 minutes before we get started from the time we were supposed to start. Alrighty, Jeff. Let's go. Oh. I'm just gonna start the recording. Last thing needs scripts for a second. Oh, uh, yeah. Scripts are off. And scripts are back on. And give me one second. Hmm. Just in case anybody uh, missed it, Jess said that backwards. She said they were off when she turned them on and turned them. Yeah. So. Yeah, but remember, I'm the evil one. That's actually Lettuce Beer's story. I, I just borrow it. Okay, uh, I think we're all here. Let me hide this window. Hey folks, welcome to uh, a Q&A. We're going to have many of these coming up. We'll talk about that shortly. Um, and thank you for coming because the fact that you're here tells me you guys want to stay up to date and you guys are like our favorite users because um, there's nothing worse than giving out information and, and having people not interested in it because the information is designed to help you guys understand what we're doing. So kudos to you all. So, uh, first item on the list is uh, Chewy. Some of you uh, may remember um, hearing about Chewy. We blogged about it at some point a while back. Uh, so, 
I'm going to try to break down what Chewy is. Uh, Linen Lab spent um, a little over a year working on, well, C-H-U-I, right? Thank you, <laughs> Meryl. Uh, working on uh, uh, basically listening to the users and um, adjusting and changing their user interface. Um, so they got rid of chiclets and, and they did all kinds of different things with the user interface to try to um, uh, improve things. They got rid of the sidebar, you know, various things like that. And um, unfortunately, though, during that process, they also were working on all kinds of other stuff, uh, very important back-end code stuff, which is, um, you know, infrastructure, hardcore back-end stuff. And um, so had they just dropped the Chewy code alone by itself, we could have ignored it because our interface is just fine, thank you very much, um, and we'll make whatever interface changes we need to as we need to. Uh, so we don't really need uh, that Chewy code. But because Linden Lab put all kinds of other stuff in that same repository of code uh, that we do need to have, um, we had to uh, try to merge that code up. And I'm just going to mute gestures here quickly. Um, so we had to merge that code in with our, our, our code. And the problem with that is that it comes with interface stuff. And it conflicts like crazy with our code, with our interface. And uh, we've been working on it, Tankmaster, um, uh, most of you know of Tank, uh, handled the majority of the merge, and Serial Hiller uh, did a lot of preparation in Firestorm for that merge. Um, and a lot of our developers have, including Tanya Cinder, folks that are, some actually a lot of our devs aren't here, unfortunately, but um, did a lot of work. We have uh, merged Chewy into, there's Kata, we merged Chewy into um, our main repository. And um, there's a lot of stuff broken. Um, and there's still a lot of stuff broken. And it's going to take us some time to fix that stuff. Um, but we're working on it. Now, the next release that we push out is going to have uh, this, some of this broken stuff. Uh, we're not going to be able to fix everything. Um, at least not in time for a timely release. We, we could spend four or five months trying to get everything fixed. And I don't think we want to wait for four or five months to get the release out because there's other stuff as well in here that we want to get released as soon as possible. And I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so at some point soon, uh, soon I mean maybe a month or two, maybe three, uh, purely guessing here, we're going to have another release out with Firestorm. And it's going to have Chewy, and you're going to find some stuff looks different. Um, in some cases, it looks different because we thought, hey, that's not bad, actually. Let's let's keep that. Um, and then there's some stuff that may look different because it's a bug, um, a conflict in the merge from the Linden interface changes. Uh, it may be something that we're going to fix when we get around to it. Um, needless to say, this merge has been a nightmare. And it is the reason why we are behind um, in a lot of the new stuff that Lin Lab has been uh, putting out. And a lot of people are saying, when are you going to get materials? When are you going to get this? When are you going to get that? Um, well, the problem is we have to get Chewy first. We have to do that first. That, that's the bad news. The good news is that um, we're making good progress in that. We're actually, we're, where we are right now is a lot further than I expected we would be in this time frame. So uh, that's actually a good thing. Now, the next thing on my list is materials. And by the way, if you guys have questions, um, we're going to answer all your questions. And uh, we'll probably do, you know, just send the questions in local chat, and we'll answer them after each topic. Uh, so that's Chewy. Everybody wants to know when material is coming. Materials. Who knows about materials? No, who doesn't know about materials? Say I in the audience. Never heard of it, not much. Do not know. A couple eyes. Me either. A little bit. Not much. A couple eyes. No care. <laughs> no care. An eye. No way. <laughs> I want it now. Okay, that's that's good. 
Okay, so for those of you that don't know what Materials is, uh, it's really cool. Um, first of all, Materials was a one of the first real uh, collaborative efforts between third-party viewers and Linen Lab. So uh, what that means is that um, Tanya from this project, Kitty Barnet from this project in Catsnip, um, Gene Spade from uh, Exodus, um, all worked with Linen Lab directly to put together this feature. Uh, this is a really cool feature. So what it is basically is, um, you know, like when you put up what you wear, a, say, a dress shirt and you got buttons on it, um, and it just looks like it's just flat texture, like it's like a picture of buttons on it, but they're not really bumpy. They don't show as uh, as buttons. Um, so what uh, Materials does is uh, makes it look real. It gives depth to um, textures in Second Life. Um, the content creators have to go out of their way to make this stuff. It's not quite the same as building regular things. It doesn't work on avatars unless it's mesh. I didn't know that. That's a shame. Anyway, there's lots of mesh coming out, so that's a good thing. Um, it also works on like walls, uh, floors, if you want to have like a laminate floor like you have in real life that's not exactly perfectly smooth, a little bit bumpy, you can do that with materials and it'll look like um, shiny and bumpy, you know, it, and, and it looks three-dimensional. It gives a three-dimensional feel to it, best way I can explain it. Um, there's some drawbacks to it. You have to turn on... Um, if you go to your Preferences Graphics General tab, you have to turn on Advanced Lighting Model. I wouldn't suggest you do that now with this many people here, you might crash. Um, it, it does have a bit of a performance impact uh, in order to see it. Um, Linen Lab is working on improving that. There's still a lot of code we don't have. But let me just say that we have materials in our local repository right now, and it looks great. I was... Uh, playing with it the other day. If you guys want to, we unfortunately, if you guys download the Linden Viewer, for those of you that don't know what it is, download the Linden Viewer um, and go to a region called Hippo Hollow, and you'll see these, they look like chessboard pieces. Go there, enable advanced lighting model, and um, you'll be able to see what materials looks like. It's very cool. It's not out for Firestorm, not yet. It will be. We got a lot of people asking, when will we have materials? Well, when we release the next release, we hope to have. First of all, we hope to have most of the bugs from the Chewy merged, and hopefully you won't notice a thing, or at least you won't notice much, and that means we've done a good job merging Chewy. Um, we should have materials, and we're hoping to have... So the next item on the list... Thank you, Letta. Uh, Letta and Miro, by the way, are sending out good links for you guys to check out. Um, the next thing on the topic list is service side appearance. How many people know what that is? Come on. Got to be everybody, right? Yep, 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 yep. Who doesn't? Yep, yep. Good, good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, everybody, pretty much. So uh, kudos to Linen Lab. Let me just say kudos to Linen Lab. I think people don't realize, I think most people do not, can't even comprehend the complexity of what Linen Lab has taken on, the risk that they have taken on with server-side appearance. Um, this is no small task, seriously. It's, it's a lot of core code that they've made changes to that could break everything. So it's not like, um, you know, Linolab releasing pathfinding or releasing mesh, where if they did it wrong, well, you just wouldn't be able to see mesh, you know, or you just wouldn't be able to use pathfinding. Or, you know, it, it, if they did this wrong, you would not be able to use Second Life. And so uh, it's, it's a pretty massive thing. In fact, it's the biggest thing that I can think of in memory that they've taken a chance with because of the potential for... Um, breakage, serious breakage. And kudos to Linen Lab. The other thing about that is that um, it's, it's nearly impossible to test properly. It is nearly impossible to properly test, to predict um, what's going to happen when they roll it out to the grid. And the reason for that is because they, it, it's very difficult to just roll it out to a little bit. 
um, it was very difficult to just load test. In fact, uh, the third-party viewers participated in some of the load tests, uh, helping Linolab do this, the testing for it. And really, you know, it was three or four regions, maybe 50 or 60 people at the very most that they were able to test this with. Now, keep in mind, 50 or 60 people is nothing compared to the, you know, 50,000 people logged in a Second Life in any given time. So guessing how things will go when they roll out live to the grid and even just on release candidate cha um, server versions, which is what they've been doing, um, has been a very risky proposition. And I can say they've even surprised, the, surprised themselves how well uh, this rollout has gone out. And I have to say publicly on record, I predicted um, it would take them th at least three rollbacks. So they would try to roll it out on a, a release candidate and they would have to roll it back. Then they try it again, roll it back, and then try it again. And I was wrong because they rolled it out on the first release candidate was uh, La Tigra, I think. Uh, and it worked great. And now it's also on um, Magnum, and it's working great. Uh, it's got a few little bugs, and they're taking, they're being very cautious in rolling it out, which is why it's only on those two uh, server versions so far. Um, but nothing like serious. <laughs> I mean, if you go, if you land yourself on a Latigra region or on a Magnum region. Um, and you look around people, they're already rezzed. It's really fast. So I have to give Linen Lab credits on server-side appearance. They've done an absolutely incredible job on something which is just a monumental task. So kudos. Um, it's not finished yet. Uh, and that's where the topic comes back in here. Um, server-side appearance is not finished yet. Um, there's still much to do. Linen Lab has uh, a lot, apparently quite a bit of code um, yet to be released to uh, third-party viewers, um, which is what they're calling polishing code, kind of like polishing it up. Um, and uh, so we're and there's no ETA on when that code is going to become available to us, but we're hoping it will become available to us before we're ready to uh, release this next uh, version, which will be four five four point five point one. Um, and so uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to have the server side appearance finishing up code as well. Um, so the next release should have uh, the Chewy merch, which hopefully you won't notice, um, materials, which hopefully you'll enjoy, um, server-side appearance polishing code so that there won't be any more problems, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, what else? What am I missing, guys? FMOD X, thank you. Um, so. Uh, FMOD is, uh, handles um, audio in Second Life, not voice, audio. Um, and they've updated that, and we've adapted that. I believe there's still some bugs with that, though, right? Yeah, it handles stream streaming music and um, other audio things. Uh, so, yeah, there's still some bugs, so hopefully those will be taken care of by the time they release next. Uh, Vivox is another one. Um, Vivox Skies is what handles voice. I'm sure everybody knows what voice is, or Vivox is. Um, Lin and I have updated to a new version of that. And uh, that should, <laughs> we hope, improve the reliability of, of voice. Uh, what else? Uh, no, it's going to be for everything. How's support? It's still like 30%. I'm not sure what you mean, Great Fox. Yeah, Vivox is designed to try to improve the reliability of, of voice. You guys may remember a week or two ago, there was a big shortage of voice working on the, on the Second Life on the grid. Um, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, Vivox, SL Voice does not go through Linux Lab. A lot of people, you know, we curse Linden Lab, the stupid voice, wish they could get it right. It's actually not Linden Lab. Uh, SL Voice goes through another company called Vivox. And um, so when there's major problems with it, Linden Lab has to uh, contact Vivox and ask for, you know, can you fix this? Just like you have to contact Linden Lab if you have a problem and you need fixed. Oh, you're talking about service-side appearance. 
um, is only 20% of the grid. I'm not sure what that actual percentage is. Um, that's probably fairly accurate. But that's, you know, 20% of, say, 50,000 people is uh, pretty good to um, gather what needs to be done. And like I said, they found some things wrong. Uh, they found some issues that they're trying to fix. Nothing major. They've not had to roll anything back ever, one at all, because it's all worked well enough that um, it's working. But there are isolated issues that they're finding popping up here and there. And that's why it's only on 20 or 30 percent of the grid. It's, it's on those two release candidate versions or servers. Um, at the third party Vero meeting we have with Linden Lab yesterday, um, it, it indicated that uh, service side appearance won't roll out to anything else um, this coming week. Um, but there's a possibility that it may roll to another release candidate the following week. It's just a possibility, and things may change. Uh, it's uh, difficult for me to, to um, read and, and talk, so I'm just trying to catch up in local here. Oh, the Kara, that, re that texture reloading issue, um, that's actually another issue. That's another uh, a symptom of a different issue, I believe. Letta, or really? I do um, poorly on that. <laughs> where else? Hey, I'm just trying to find the question in then local. Oh, the question was, the question was uh, texture is continuously re like uh, rebaking. Uh, yeah, Mr. That's and a Mr. Real and problem for a lot of people since the SSA code went in. Um, the devs are looking at that. Tanya actually gets that quite badly. She was looking at this yesterday. Um, yeah, we hope to have it fixed for the next release, but I don't know, really. It depends if the devs can fix it or not. But yeah, we, we know it's a problem. That's not truly a problem for us, is it? Isn't doesn't that exist on other viewers? On other viewers? Um, yes, it's in Viewer Three as well. And as far as I know, it's also in other viewers that have the SSA code merged in. It's it's not just us at all. Okay, I thought so. I'm just trying to control this camera and think at the same time. Okay, so next. No, it's not your settings, Kara. Some people have been fixed by turning HTTP fetch textures off with it, and uh, there have been an, a couple of other people who have uh, found that they were actually running their view in compatibility mode for XPSP2 or XPSP3 when they were on either Vista or Win7, and turning that compatibility mode off seemed to have helped them as well. So um, it's a weird one. Also, some people find that when they're wearing a certain HUD or a certain item of mesh, it causes it for them. Um, one of the HUDs we've had reported that causes it is um, the Toddly Do HUD. And when someone detaches that HUD, it, it completely stops the textures reloading, and we, we really don't know why yet. And another one is the Tiny Empires HUD. And then, uh, so. Um Another question I just saw in here. Oh, it was just answered by Mister. Thank you, Mister. Yeah, okay. I have to um, say that the uh, the tiny empire stuff is bothering me, uh, even even above and beyond the texture refresh issues I've been having because I'm uh, pretty high up in both tiny empires games. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is. What is that for? It's a HUD-based game that people can play wherever and whenever they happen to be. Okay, Amber has the next question. Uh, what can be done to get double-click movement teleport back to where you can use them without proper major surgery? Um, presuming you mean uh, inferences? Uh, 
Uh, control shift D enables it and disables it if going into preferences is a problem. The only problem I've noticed with it is it doesn't show the uh, message in chat when it's enabled and disabled. Yeah, I, I've been asking for that Could for be ages. A chewy problem. <laughs> and that's actually that, should be easy to fix. Originally, when I added the shortcut to enable it, and same with the uh, ground forced ground sit, it did do the chat message. It's gotten broken since then. I've not seen that problem before, Kara. Well, and here's here's the sort of the unfortunate message I have to offer you guys is that um, while the next release of Firestorm is going to have a lot of stuff, lots of new stuff, it will be a major release. Um, it's going to have some issues because we're not going to be able to find all the bugs and we're not going to be able to fix all the bugs um, that we've incurred from Chewy. Um, Although I, I gotta say, I mean, I'm running it right now, and it works great for me. But I only use one particular skin, and keep in mind, the Chewy has an effect on all of our different skins. So I may not be able to find a bug in the skin I'm using. It doesn't mean there's not bugs on the other skins. So we have to get into the QA process, which we've not started yet. Um, and I got Lassie over my right shoulder here in a, I think it's a dragon, um, and I don't want to make him angry, <laughs> but um, Lassie is still waiting for a build to QA, which I'm hoping, uh, surprise the devs, I'm hoping we can get a build out to QA, like, this weekend. So we can start that process as well. Um, the, 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 the delay for putting it out to QA is because uh, there are a lot of issues already that we know of, and sending it, sending it to QA um, is just going to give us a whole lot of more issues that we already know of, and, and then we become overwhelmed. Um, so we've just been sort of dealing with the uh, issues that we have or that we're aware of right now before we go to QA. Yeah, Kata, if you want to talk about your skin, that's fine. Now, someone just mentioned Vengeance. It's like I'm working on a, on a uh, fork of it that's got what I feel is a slightly more um, Phoenix like default setting profile, as well as some uh, different UI um, behaviors. So your skin that you're working on is going to be um, a lot more V1-ish than the Vintage? But yeah. But yet a clone of the Vintage, sort of? Well, it started out as a clone, but I stripped it back from the... Um, it, vintage has a lot of unrelated changes now. Um, and a lot of things that I did were in default, so I allowed those to propagate up, and other things I've changed, like I made the... Um, volume controls down the bottom, actually a panel that pops out as opposed to a floater. I'd like to do the same with um, the quick preferences, but that's probably not going to be too possible since it's hard, sort of hard-coded as a floater. It would require quite a bit of work to make that work also as a panel. So just having it start in the bottom corner is usually good enough for the means of that. Notifications are going to be a little bit of a problem since those are essentially completely screwed up right now. I don't know what what me or anybody's going to do about that since they I mean literally they go anywhere randomly right now since Chewy, which is a lot of fun. There's no predictability as to where a notification is going to pop up on screen. Um, or if it will be on screen fully. I've had that happen quite a bit with group notices where they're tiling in the corner. So they, so each successive one is further off the screen and then eventually at some random point they start popping up in the opposite corner, which is um, not fun. Same thing with scripted notifications and a lot of other things. It's, it's a big mess. But notifications have never not been a big mess.
just gotten worse. So I guess we can actually sort of segue off topic for a moment and talk about skinning and Firestorm. Um, skinning in, in V1 historically before like Viewer 2.0 came along uh, was generally kept to just sort of color theme sort of changes. Um, but the skins were still universally the same from one uh, skin to another. Um, talking about Phoenix specifically, uh, you know, we had a whole bunch of different skins, but the buttons were all in the same place, the preferences were all in the same place, um, all the same defaults were from one skin to the next skin. When it came to skinning Firestorm, uh, viewer 2, we'll say, um, the, the way this viewer, and by this viewer I just mean, let's just say the viewer 2 code base in general, not Firestorm specifically or any, just the code base in general, um, came to us uh, coded quite differently from viewer 1. It's much, it is uh, times 10 harder to skin this viewer than it was to skin viewer 1, for example. Um, so we had the challenge of getting developers interested in trying to even bother with skinning because it, it really was a rage thing. We look at it and say, why the heck did they do that? Why doesn't this work? Why can't I do that? Um, people have been asking for chiclets to be killed for ages. We've been trying to kill chiclets for ages. It, it really is not that simple. Um, They're very deep. It, it's very deep and it goes but back way like deep into the code. the most basic <laughs> level how any and just, it's not just chiclets, it's any form of notification works. It assumes that it works this one way, and there's, unless you just completely subvert them, there's no real way to change their behavior. So you either have to completely rebuild the entire notification system at a certain point, or you live with how they are. So what started happening was that um, I would get uh, one dev who would be uh, would start working on a skin, and and it, they come down to saying, uh, you know, I don't like this default, and by default I mean um, I don't like this, the default location of the nearby chat. I think it should be on the bottom left, and um, another dev would say, you know, I don't, I I like to have the the chat bar different. Or I want to have buttons different, or I want to have this different and that different, and and it boiled down to saying, well, look, if you want me to make you a new skin, you're going to have to let me, you know, do the skin how I want it. And so, you'll notice when you go from one skin to another skin, not only are they visually different, but the defaults are different from one skin to another skin. Um, in vintage skin, for example, there are no chiclets, um, or are there? I can't remember. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. There are? Oh. So what do you call it, chiclet? Because there's a lot of things that sort of fall into that things up on the thing. top right. It's everybody else. Yeah, it has those. It's not yeah, consistent, has... though. Which is annoying. Because it, it, it doesn't do them all the time, and it should, because there's no other indication that you have a message. So I think they're enabled. It, I just don't think it works sometimes. Well, that's certainly... What? Uh, true possibility. <laughs> yeah. um, chiclets are disabled by default on Phoenix login mode. They're hidden by default, but you can turn them back on in preferences. I think in all other login modes, they're enabled by default, but you can also disable them in preferences. Okay. Then, then it's broken the other way, which it's when it's off, it does it does come up still because I'm getting them now because <laughs> I got I got it right now. That's. Uh... Oh, that yeah, may be a bug in yeah. the Chewy Merge. That did work on um, release. I think you have to re-log, actually, when you've enabled them or disabled them. Um, but there were some uh, other bugs yeah. associated yeah. with that. Time. So I think it's uh, just kind of broken. I might just turn it on for mine, since it's the only indication you have a message. So, so the least worst case. Just sort of getting back to my point. Um, 
So in viewer one, when we had a bug on one skin, we could fix it on that skin and it would fix it on all of the skins. And that bug would exist on all the other skins because they all share the same files. With the way skinning is done on Firestorm now, each skin has their own files, their own defaults, their own settings, their own preferences. So as far as maintenance is concerned, it's a bloody nightmare. Because if we have a bug on one, we don't know about it unless we use that skin. And so for example, you know, the skin I'm using may look fine, but it doesn't mean that the vintage skin doesn't have a bug. It doesn't mean that um, any of the other skins may have bugs. And uh, so just my point being that um, you may find bugs on some skins that don't exist on others. There is also the support factor. Um, so some things are in different places from one skin to another. And if a user comes to support for help, they sort of have to guess what skin you're on. <laughs> There's Ed's growl. They have to try to figure out what skin you're using because depending on the skin you're using, it's in a different location. Um, and that's why we have uh, the option in the support groups to send your uh, viewer type. And what that does is that tells support what viewer you're using. And it really helps support when you enable that, um, when they try to answer questions for you. Um, and that's why... Earlier, Leto was sending somebody to preferences rather than to a UI thing to fix the problem one of the users was having. It's because depending on what skin yes. that user is on, it's different. And um, so that that's kind of a fail for us. It, it's, you know, you guys kind of benefit from it because you get options and, and choices. But it, it's a, a major hit for us as far as maintenance um, and as far as uh, support. And when we merge in Linen Labs interface changes, um, it'll affect some skins and it won't affect others. So that's why Chewy has been such a problem, and that's why we've been so uh, kind of lagging behind with uh, certain things that that Linen Lab has released that we haven't been able to yet because we kind of have to get we have to get the the uh, infrastructure code that came with Chewy implemented in our viewer so that we can get all the other stuff. Some people like chiclet, some people don't. So remember, you guys remember the sidebar? Those of you who were in Second Life when Linen Lab, you know, came out with a sidebar. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember how much screaming there was at the sidebar? And myself included. Everybody hated the sidebar. And it Not was... Everybody. Well, at first everybody did. But then a lot of people got to like it. No, there were some but still, did. a lot of people hated it. And a lot of people swore... Well, I can't... You're right. I can't just blanket say everybody hated it, but a lot of people hated it. Um, and Linen Lab decided to listen to their users, kudos to them, and they got rid of the sidebar. And what happened when they got rid of the sidebar? They got screamed at by people who liked the sidebar. <laughs> so it's a no-win situation, and people wonder why Linen Lab... Um, People wonder why people think, or it seems like, Linen Lab doesn't listen to their users. It's not that they don't listen to them, I think. I think that they they just know that they're damned if they... Right, like Seth said, they're damned if they do, and they're damned if they don't. Uh, chiclets is the same thing. We're trying... We've been trying to kill chiclets. But if we kill chiclets altogether, um, people are going to rage that we got rid of chiclets. Uh, and the same goes for everything else. Um, I've had people still asking me if we can bring back the sidebar. Still, I just got an email the other day. Can you bring back the sidebar? Why did you get rid of the sidebar? And um, so it's a bit of a conundrum for uh, third-party viewers and for Linen Lab mm -hmm. that any change you make is going to piss off some people and make some people happy. And then if you change it back, you're just going to get the opposite reaction. It's pretty difficult to please everybody. Can I say something here about that? As Go well? for just, it. Just as a slight extension. Um, for, for, for all of you out there who say, oh, but it should be this way as a default, um, do you realize how many people we're going to piss off if we change the default to the way that you want it? And that goes for just about every preference that you might want to change the default for. Every single one of them. This is why I made my own profile. So... Uh, uh, there's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna babble for just a minute, Jess. Sorry. Um, Go for it. Fire, Firestorm is not a simple viewer. If you want simple, you're on the wrong viewer. Okay. 
um, you've got a ton of preferences in there, okay, um, that you can change the way you want. If, if, if you want a different default, uh, sorry about your luck, but quite frankly, we've had team discussions about defaults in the past that turned into, to be bl totally blunt about it, heated arguments that went on for two weeks about a simple default. Um, sorry, folks, uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't worth the headaches, not only within the team, but uh, with dealing with the drama afterwards. Oh, you changed my defaults on me. Now I'll shut up again for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to try to catch up with local chat. A lot of people saying questions here. Uh, the best use the best use experience doesn't include every optional possible. That that's arguable. Arguable. Um, that's the choice that we took, and we pay the price for that. Um, will the next uh, release have no chiclets? Uh, hopefully, that'll be optional. At the moment, um, I think it's semi-optional at the moment. Yeah, that's right. We got it back. Yay. Really, as long I, as there's I, something that shows up on the screen that tells you that there are IMs there, I think most people will be content. Although, yeah, full chiclet optionality would be awesome. Well, of course, the it, a lot of people don't realize, I guess, that you know, chiclets was the replacement for notices. Uh, and um, we you know, got rid of chiclets with Chewy, but there's still no notices. So... The chiclets do serve a purpose. Um, Tahiti, back to fetching for a sec. Is the delay in the past year in seeing edits to terrain textures immediately, new texture and or elevation changes until they're forming over again? Is that an HTTP fetching issue? I can take that one. Um, no, it's not okay. an HTTP okay. fetching bug. I will post you the JIRA link here. It's something we picked up from Viewer 3, unfortunately. Um, I'm just going to shout the JIRA link for that bug. Let's talk a little bit more about preferences um, to address Zayon. Um, so, Little Lab shows the path that uh, options are bad. And there is logic, there is sound reason and sound logic behind that. Uh, the more options you give the user, the more toys you're giving them, to, the tools you're putting in their hands to screw up their viewer. Uh, and then they come to support because they're having all these problems. And so in many, and the other thing, of course, is the more options you have, the more difficult it is uh, to uh, support the viewer, to support the user. Um, and we have that problem. My, our uh, outlook on it is, is this. Give the users as many options as you can within reason. And there's, that's a key word there, within reason. Um, and, and be able to support it by having a dedicated kick butt uh, support team. Host classes to educate people. You know, I, I've heard the argument we shouldn't have to go to class to, just to use the viewer. Well, if you want to use Firestorm, Firestorm is a power user viewer. And if you want to use it efficiently and, and you want to have a good experience with it and you want to know how to fix the problems that you come across, go to the bloody classes. That's what they're there for. Firestorm is not a basic viewer. It, it is a very advanced and complicated viewer, and it's very difficult for us to support it because it is just becoming more and more complicated with the more and more features and options that we put into it. Um, 
uh, just reading from Fresh French Angel. Is it in preview refactoring over the preferences tab? Some, beca some becomes very complexity huge, and particularly for some not understanding well. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I can tell you one thing about preferences. Um, it's a disaster. Uh, I, you know, when I get to the point where I'm looking for something, um, what was it the other day? What was it yesterday? Ed, do you remember? Uh, Miro gave it to me, actually. It was, um, oh, right, uh, notifying you when you enter a different uh, server version. And that was in, where was that? Anyway, the option was in a preference panel that had absolutely nothing to do with what it was, and I have no idea why it's there. Couldn't find it. Um, it's completely illogical. When we started Firestorm, you guys remember Phoenix? Preferences in Phoenix was just a mess, complete mess. You couldn't find anything half the time. When we started Firestorm, we said, whatever we do, let's not let the preferences become like Phoenix. Whatever we do. And we even sat down and, and worked out a plan for preferences and, and all that stuff. And <laughs> if you guys could see preferences right now on the uh, internal build that, that I'm running right now, um, unreleased, it's, it's a complete disaster. You can't find a bloody thing. And I'm hoping, upon hope, that we can refactor preferences before we release. What that means, though, is that things are going to be really confusing for you guys again. You're not going to be able to find stuff because it's going to get moved around into what should be more logical locations. Um, so, again, is uh, having lots of options good? Well, <laughs> you end up with problems like this where you can't even find the options because you have so many of them. Yeah, never, uh, uh, never mind uh, users not being able to find them. Oh, half the developers can't find them. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I can never find I, anything. I would like to answer Eve's question. Eve, a.k.a. Enland, Flemish language consultancy for anyone who does not have display names on. Um, the question was, what if people don't have time to go to classes? Are the settings per default for those people logical to use? Uh, well, here's a secret about our classes. Um, although it's a lot more interactive than reading the wiki, uh, the, most of the material for most of the classes come directly from the wiki. So uh, if you are unable to come to the classes, uh, whenever there's a preference that you have a question about, uh, find the little question mark in the upper right-hand corner of that preferences tab and click it. And it will open a media browser for you containing the wiki page for that preferences tab. And you'll get an explanation of what those things do. Uh, there are some videos on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, and some of our classes are recorded, but they're getting pretty old. I think they're a year old now, so only so the only ones that are probably still mostly valid are the contact sets and AO classes, but um, most of the menus. But um, uh, yeah, so so you do you can check the wiki on that. Um, also, keep it keep an eye on the class schedule. The uh, scheduling takes um, takes place anywhere between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Um, any day of the week, and it gets switched around every single time we reschedule the classes. So um, if a class doesn't work out for you the first time it's offered, check back a couple of weeks later, and it will probably be held on a different day and a different time. Amber, um, stick around after the uh, Q&A, and um, we'll talk about your double-click teleport issue a little bit more. I, I can it, answer it's, Amber it's, um, quickly. Okay. I think okay. um, her problem was that to change between the double-click movement and double-click TP, she had to go into too many preferences. Um, it was buried too deeply. She can actually add those um, preferences to her quick press. Ah, ah. So they'll be available with just a couple of clicks. Um, so we can go through that with you after, Amber, and show you how to do that. We've got a video on that, don't we? Didn't I do a video on that? Oh, I think you did. Yes. I did a video on I that. I did a video on that. Amber, we've got a feature. I completely forgot about it, too. We've got a feature with quick preferences where you can... Um, 
put whatever preferences you want into this little quick little preferences panel, and you can just click, click, enable it, disable it, do whatever, and so you can actually go in and find it. And there's a video on it, and I bet somebody is going to dig it up any minute now. And if not, I'll dig it up after the, um, uh, after the, uh, what is this, the QA. <laughs> I told you I would get vocabularily blocked today. Uh, who designs inventory? Any possibility inventory might be revamped or updated? Or is that a dumb question? No, there's no such thing as dumb questions, only dumb answers. Um, inventory is incredibly complicated uh, and ex doubly complicated in our case because of our LVA. Um, and uh, Kitty does and, and is in no way responsible for any bugs with inventory, but Kitty does a lot of inventory work for us. Um, she's quite familiar with it, um, but there are a lot of bugs in inventory, and there are new bugs now because we've merged from Chewy. And in fact, just about any time we merge with Linen Lab, we get some bugs with our inventory because uh, we've done things differently with inventory. Um, Somebody, actually a few people recently, and I'm not sure if it's coincidence, but a few people recently asked for uh, the ability to lock items in your inventory, just like uh, bridge can be locked to stay attached. So even if you do a detach all, bridge will stay attached. Um, and I've had a few emails and a few IMs from, from people asking for that. I don't know if some group was talking about it or something. But um, that is not a new idea. Um, we actually, that came up a long time ago. Uh, some of our devs may not even remember it, but uh, we discussed it, and if I remember correctly, we said no to that because it would cause all kinds of issues with um, our LVA. Could be wrong, I usually am, but I'm pretty sure that's why we don't have it, and can't do it. Well, speaking of our LVA, you could just do the exactly that with our LVA. It could be done with our LV, yeah. So who is responsible for inventory? Um, Linen let's Lab. Say that's for breaking. Rodvik. Let's say Rodvik. And everybody send your emails to Rodvik. <laughs> uh, but no, it's the, the majority of the viewer code comes from Linen Lab, guys. Uh, Firestorm is 98% Linden code. And when we do a merge, um, we're, we're merging, you know, kind of, they're a lot of code into a little bit of our code. And um, so a lot of people say that, you know, we invented the Firestorm Viewer. Actually, Linen Lab did. We've just modified it a lot. Yeah, in fact, I uh, wrote a blog entry about this. Um, there are other viewers out there that uh, spend a lot of time and effort reinventing wheels. Um, and... and uh, we choose instead to embrace the Linden code base, uh, warts and all. Uh, you know, e each approach has its pluses and its minuses. Uh, we happen to think the way we go about it is uh, superior, but you know that's as much a matter of opinion as everything else. What it does mean is that when Linden Lab messes up things, we inherit the mess up and then have to fix. It. And things like Chewy. Um, remove the ability for us to um, kind of pick and choose. Uh, quite often what we've done in the past where Lin Lab will push something out and we'll just sort of cherry pick bits of what they did. And it would have been great if, and we certainly looked at this as an option, cherry picking out the stuff we need and leaving the interface changes that Lin Lab did. Um, alone, but there was just so much stuff, and it was just so intertwined that we had to sort of take everything, break Firestorm completely in that process, and then spend a whole lot of time trying to unbreak it. And that's what we're, that's where we are right now. We're sort of unbreaking the viewer. And the warning kind of we get on the code is if we break it, then we get to keep both. They, they kind of touched absolutely everything involving chat at every point in the viewer, which kind of messes with everything, since anything that touches chat in any fashion, which is a lot of stuff, had to be done in some fashion. 
Um, to answer 555AAA, uh, are there any advances in reducing RAM issues with the update viewers, or is everything becoming more RAM intensive? Um, the, I, I don't know of a viewer release ever from anybody that didn't have some memory leaks. And a memory leak is, uh, you know, when you enter a region and there's all kinds of avatars and all those avatars get loaded into RAM, and then you leave that region and what should happen is that all those avatars then get removed from RAM, um, but don't. And so then you go to the next region and more avatars get added to RAM and you end up with your memory building up higher, higher, higher. That's you can, layman's terms, but... You can kind of see that happening in the radar. It's, uh, yeah. it's slower than it should be. That's, that's true. Clear. Well, actually, radar for us right now on our internal builds is a lot slower than on release build. But um, anyway, we're constantly fixing memory leaks as we find them. Um, and with every release of the viewer, we have more memory leaks. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's it's like an on, it's a cat and mouse game. It's a constant thing, and there's no no real necessary and insight. They just happen in any software. And also, memory leaks are extremely difficult to trace. The good thing is, RAM is very cheap now. <laughs> Get more um, RAM. Jess, can I do a little bit of a rant here? Go for One it. One of the things I wanted to cover, anyhow. One one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Oh, was the um, same settings? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ed has the floor, folks. And if you could just hold your questions for uh, Ed to rant, or he'll bash your head in. <laughs> no, I'll turn damage on and kill everybody. Um, <clears throat> no, I wouldn't do that. Not here. I'd do it at home, but not here. Um, we, we see a lot of problems in Second Life that are, are, are related to your settings. Maybe not yours in particular, okay? But in general, users like to ramp their settings up. They want their graphics to be up really high. They want their draw distance of 512 meters. They clear their cache. Um, so let's talk about sane settings for Second Life for a minute, okay? Do you really need to have your draw distance at 1,024 meters? Do you realize how many regions you can see on the mainland if your draw distance is set at 1,024 meters? Do you realize how many objects you're rendering? Do you even understand um, exactly how draw distance works? If you double your draw distance, for example, from 32 meters to 64 meters, you are not doubling the amount of area that you're seeing. It is up to eight times as much area. So you're grabbing that many more textures if there are things around you. Think about it for a minute. And you're stressing your machine. That's your computer that has to do all the work on it. Okay? Another one. You've ramped up your bandwidth because 3,000, 3,000, uh, uh, on the bandwidth slider is more reasonable for you, right? Wrong! That's not the way it works. You're generally going to have fewer problems if you keep your bandwidth lower. Okay? So, sorry folks, if you come to me with a problem and you've got your bandwidth ramped up to 3,000 and your draw distance at 1,000 meters, I'm going to tell you to turn them down. And if you're not going to um, accommodate me, I'm simply going to say, well, sorry, have fun, good luck, can't help you. Okay? There are a ton of things that do not respect the bandwidth thro uh, throttle in the viewer. Voice works outside of it. Music works outside of it. Media works outside of it. Sorry, Tanya. I'm, I'm a little passionate about this one. Okay? I'd, I'd like to... I'm sorry, were you done, Ed? Yeah, basically, I'd better shut up or I'm going to start really yelling and then Tanya will be clawing me or something. I was, I was going to add just a little bit of context to the same rant, actually. Uh, yeah, the, first, say, the, first thing, the first thing is that, uh, uh, first off, if you are not experiencing any problems with the settings as, you, as they are right now, 
then we can't really tell you to change them, and we're not going to. You can have your settings however the heck you want to have them if you're not experiencing problems with them. However, the difficulty comes in when people come in with an issue, and they say, oh, I'm having this problem, and these are my settings, and we recommend changing those settings, and they stick to them really hard, and they won't change them one second because they, because they say, oh, I didn't used to have to change them, or, well, it worked in Phoenix, or, you know, whatever it happened to be. Well, viewers change. Your needs change. Second life changes. The landscape changes. Everything that you're rendering changes. Two years ago, you weren't rendering mesh. Now you have to, you know, now there may be mesh requests going on that, that have to do with what you're rendering. Um, a variety of different components may change for you. Uh, and when we're talking about network, related things such as bandwidth, it's going to change. Networks change. Um, you know, your network is not the same today as it was yesterday. Not identical anyway. Um, and so forth. So, uh, so if you are not experiencing problems, then you can just, you know, relax and not worry about uh, everything that I just said. However, if you are experiencing problems, um, the very first thing, particularly if it's a performance issue and your draw distance is a thousand meters, just cut it in half, at least. Cut it in, you know, cut it down. The fact that, if I'm not mistaken, the default draw distance for ultra graphics is 256 still, that should be an indication of what SL considers to be a high draw distance. So, you know, listen to your computer. Don't tell it what you need it to do. You listen to how it is responding to your settings and your activities, and don't be afraid to make any adjustments. There's, there's nothing golden about any particular setting that you tend to use. So just to add some context to um, the support rants, <laughs> um, support has Ed, especially, and Letta, and, and actually all you guys here um, have been doing this for about three years, which is sort of segueing into another topic, which I don't want to segue into yet, but three years of doing support, and I'll tell you what, um, support is the single hardest bloody thing that you can do. It's uh, I have all the respect for their, our developers, and they work their arses off. No argument. But support is a hard, hard, harder job. <laughs> I mean, way harder job. And people I am me, like, oh, you're the project manager, so you know everything. No, actually, I don't. Um, in fact, I know very little. I do know that I suck at support. Um, and these guys have the most amount of patience and deal with the most amount of angry people um, and so there's a reason there might be a little bit of tension in their voices talking about this particular topic because they see it all the time 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 so understandably <laughs> uh, grumpy 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 <laughs> Uh, I, I'm just glad that when Letta was talking, I noticed a slight rise in her voice as well. So uh, uh, just I, I don't a slight feel one. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, sorry, I don't know if this question, seeing as there will be Firestorm Chewy future version, still the choice to save chat log differently than I am. So yeah, that'll be still the same. So to be clear with Chewy, we call it Chewy. Uh, because Chewy was the bane of our existence and has been for a little while and, and will still be for a while yet. Um, just because Chewy came with, you know, it was all this code, so we just sort of call it Chewy. But we're not going to call it the Chewy release. It's going to be 4.5.1 will be the release version. Um, but you may hear us refer to it as Chewy, just because, like I say, it's been it's been fun. <laughs> it's been interesting uh, working out this um, code drop from Linden Lab. So, um, may I? Yeah. Amber, um, overgeneralizing, minimizing the question. Sorry, uh, if you want to bring your computer to me in real life, I'll take a look at your settings in your computer and I'll be able to help you out. But without actually having your 
computer physically here, I have to generalize. I have to, especially in the group we have to generalize. Okay, and misunderstanding the question? Sorry, this is uh, Second Life and it's text and based for the most part. And misunderstanding is um, a big deal. It really is. Z Zion, the problem with that is we've had people say, you've broken my computer. Okay? And yeah, we early, do not early want on to be accused did, um, of that. Early on, we did a lot of team viewer with users. And to be absolutely honest, it is much faster for us to just be able to team viewer into your computer. We can fix it ourselves because we, we're, we're, you know, we know exactly where we're going. We know exactly what to do to fix it. But then um, the next day, the user comes back and says that, you know, something's been deleted or my password's been stolen or this or that or the other thing. And... and so it has become a liability for us to do that, and it's unfortunate because it's a very useful tool for us to be able to help users. Um, so we use it very sparingly now. Uh, and, and in fact, I have requested, not, not demanded, but requested that if support does do a remote with somebody's computer to um, get them to at least uh, textually agree that you know, if anything goes wrong, that they're not held responsible. We are a corporation, um, and I, I, we incorporated the project so that we could be accountable. It was intentional for that purpose specifically. Um, and but <laughs> the catch to that is, we can also be held accountable for things that we didn't do, like supposedly breaking somebody's computer. So we have to be pretty careful with with what we do. It's it's unfortunate because it. It, um, like I say, it's a very useful tool for us. Yeah, um, yeah. To to branch off of Worley's uh, point right there, arguing, kicking, and screaming doesn't get the best help when you're asking for help from volunteers who need to take emotional care of themselves once in a while. And um, you know, we we choose when we work. We choose when we don't work. We choose um, which questions we're able to answer. And, um, you know, I hate to say it, but sometimes we choose which questions we choose not to answer as well. And um, <laughs> that I, I hope that doesn't get me in trouble for admitting that. But, um, yeah, if you, can't, if, if you can't appreciate free support... <laughs> I better stop along that uh, along that particular line. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me just add to that just a little bit. Um, support from the very beginning in this project, um, the developers do what they do because they feel like doing it because they want to do it. You guys don't pay us, um, and we're not doing it because we get paid. We're doing it because we want to do it. That's the whole thing of volunteering. Um, support is no different, and support has a really tough ass job. Um, especially as volunteers, uh, they're told when they come on, you do not have to provide support. I, I When we first started the project, and, and it was me telling these people this, I told them that, and, and Ed does that now, and, and I think Led is doing that now, and that's kind of a rule as far as support is concerned. If you don't feel like doing support, don't do support. That's it. it it's Support is kind of like a... <sighs> Be thankful when you get it, because it can't be guaranteed. And, you know, we get a lot of people come into our support groups, and they're asking questions, and the questions aren't being answered. Sometimes it may be because the support person who happens to be there doesn't know the answer to it. Sometimes the support person that's there is actually in 10 other IM windows, and that's probably most often the case. Um, and they don't even see it. Uh, sometimes uh, the support person is just in a bad mood. They happen to be in the group but they just don't feel like doing support, and that's their prerogative, and they're allowed to do that because they're volunteers. That's the way it goes. That's the way it's set up, in fact. Uh, it's, uh, we have a higher burnout rate from our support people than, than I think anywhere else. And by burnout, I mean people get very aggravated, they get very tired, they overwork, they do too much, and they don't see themselves reaching that burnout point. Uh, and eventually they reach it, and it's like hitting rock bottom. And depression comes into play, all kinds of stuff. It, it's, it's a really demanding job. 
and um, you know something that uh, that people don't often think of. Uh, you know, as just pointed out, us developers we work on the viewer because we can scratch our own itches. Uh, if we find something about the viewer we don't like, we get in there and we change it. Um, and the support people, quite frankly, I don't know why they do it because there's no. <laughs> They, can, they, they have itches, certainly, but can they scratch them? Uh, they can't get in there and change the, the viewer to do what uh, uh, to do what they want to do. They can bug a developer, but so can anybody else. Um, I have an immense amount of respect for our support volunteers. They put in a lot of time and a lot of effort for damn little things. Um, I do what I can to support them, and Jess does, and the rest of the team does. But uh, I I couldn't do it. I'd throw my hands in the air and go and go fishing. So did we miss any? Uh, uh, it, we love Tanya. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tanya. Did we miss any? Um, did we miss any direct questions during that uh, tangent of the conversation? Well, I think we lost. We don't miss a lot. Uh, yeah. And could anybody repeat their questions if anything got lost? Uh, could you repeat the toast question, please? And also, Nathan has one. Nathan, in my experience, that's a uh, um, r related to your viewer, actually. I I I've been someplace with uh, somebody that had the issue and been watching the door. The, the door didn't close again for them when it was supposed to, but it closed for me fine. The door issue, I think, is fixed after this last merge. We got all the Linden Lab fixes in. Um, still needs to be checked, but a lot of the repro objects are now the bug isn't reproducing. Um, I think Pantera has a door that still reproduces it, so I need to go and look at that um, and also compare it to see if it's still broken on Viewer 3. But hopefully this next release should have most of those um, rotating and sliding door issues fixed. Uh, so on the, this question, yeah, um, a lot of people uh, use the word toast to refer to a variety of things that the word doesn't necessarily actually refer to. Toast specifically refers to the pop-ups that show up in a corner of your screen. It can be one of several corners, actually, and will fade if you don't click them closed um, after a set period of time. Uh, the... Um, Sophia is asking actually about hover tips. Uh, that's located in Pref's user interface. And um, to turn them off completely, try unchecking show hover tips. Um, if you uh, uh, if you're if you're also seeing, I'm not sure if turning those off also turns off tool tips. Um, so if you're getting annoyed by the presence of tool tips as well, which are the hover it tips does. that show up when you they do, okay. Yeah, it does. Both. I don't think I, it used I to do that. Often, I prefer it that way. It's not a huge hindrance having all the tooltips off. It doesn't turn off tooltips mm -hmm. in the UI. Just the word that's the ones. Tips. Yeah, but that's those are the ones I was referring to. So if you want to turn off the tooltips as well, you can't completely do that. But turn the trigger delay up all the way, and you'll be a lot less likely for those to uh, end up bothering you. Okay, uh, still, still trying to keep up in here. Um, Nathan, what about the issue with manually created folders in the garments folder in inventory not showing up in appearances panel? Garments, uh, I'm assuming you mean outfits folder? Efforts. Yeah, um, so uh, nobody is supposed to actually create folders or, or put content in the outfits folder. It's, it's a system folder. Um, and lots of issues have uh, occurred from people doing that, uh, especially saving objects in those folders. It's supposed to be only for 
uh, links. Um, and content that goes in that folder should only be there from creating or editing your appearance. Um, and any other behavior in there is, is not supported. But I, I do know other people who have created subfolders in the outfits folder uh, to put other outfits into. Uh, and that should work. But um, as far as inventory goes, again, that's 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 ninety nine point nine 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 percent linen lab code, including the outfits folder, um, and not really code that we can do much about because um, inventory is a whole lot of server side stuff, like a whole lot of server stuff, and so we can't make many changes. Certainly, we can't change. We can change something in the way it works on the viewer, but if there's no if there's no support for it in the server side, it's just not going to work. Did anyone answer Fifty Five's question about screen sharing in SI? Um yeah, think, well, somebody said over my dead body, and, and I will just reiterate <laughs> that uh, we're not going to do screen sharing in Second Life. There's a lot of reasons for it. Um, just way too much uh, possibility for abuse. Yeah, it's just uh, that's, that's, a, that's a pathway we won't, we're not going to venture down. Screen sharing is uh, letting somebody else see what's on your screen. So let me give you a hypothetical. Um, George says to Tara, uh, here, take a look at my screen. Um, and Tara looks at it. And then the next day, George's account gets hacked. And then George goes to Linen Lab saying that um, Tara hacked my account through Firestorm. Um, so you could you can get an idea of you know where that's going. It's just wow, just definitely not. <laughs> Linden Lab would probably shut us down if we put something they wouldn't like allow that it, in. I bet, yeah. Because it's 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 an invasion of privacy. Firestorm Mobile for Android. Oh, I would love to do that. I really would. I have an Android phone, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, can you say total rewrite, kitties? Um, well, I'll put in a plug here for Lumaya on Android. It works great. It's fantastic. The developer uh, is very responsive, and it's actually very usable on my Nexus 7. Yeah, Lumaya is fantastic. It, it's, you know, I said uh, on a blog post after that, that um, April Fool's joke uh, that, uh, you know, Lumaya and uh, Pocket Metaverse were as good as it gets. And that wasn't, that wasn't to, as a, as a, poke or a negative thing towards them. That's to say, they are really good, and that is as good as you're going to get, because making uh, an app for a Second Life for a phone is incredibly difficult. It's really, you know, it. what you guys have available to you with, with those apps is absolutely stunning work, really good work. And, and I could guarantee you we couldn't do better. We could not do better because we don't have anybody on the team with the expertise for those operating systems and how to do anything on them as far as making apps. I don't think anybody in this project has made an app for a phone. Uh, here's actually, uh, since, we, since we've talked about screen sharing and we've talked about um, uh, mobile apps, uh, let me give you a quick tip. If you install a, uh, um, a remote access app on your Android, iPod, uh, sorry, iPad, <laughs> iPhone, etc., um, and leave your computer on at home, and then uh, access it from your mobile device. Uh, you could use Firestorm remotely in that way. Um, it's not exact, you know. It's not as elegant an option as if you actually had Second Life on your mobile device. Um, but it, if if you really, really, really want to take SL with you, 
Um, yeah, it would probably be pretty terrible resolution, at least on a phone. But um, it's it would be an option uh, since remote access will allow you to you would you'd need to have the computer on when you leave the house, but um, you'd be able to do anything that the remote access application allows you to do. Which I haven't used one, but I believe you'll be able to uh, just access your desktop and uh, click on your Firestorm icon. I team viewer to my PC from my uh, Galaxy Note 2 all the time. And um, it's quite useful. I don't know if I'd do Second Life with it, though. I actually, to be honest, I couldn't because I get so many IMs. I could not cope with that on my phone. Um, Team Viewer. It's free. Don't use it commercially. Um, and uh, it's great. Oh, well, I mean, if you use it commercially, pay for it. Don't screw them around because they, they've made a good effort there in, in trying to keep it free. But uh, Team Viewer is fantastic. I believe Log Me In uh, is usable for that purpose, too. Yep. I used to use Log Me In, yeah. And I, I'm, I apologize, folks. I know we're still missing questions, and it's just text and local goes so fast. Team Viewer, yeah. Team Viewer dot... Com, I believe. There it is. We at least got it. Log me in, which looks a little like low main when you type it. But I used to use log me in. Uh, in fact, I paid for it, but then I discovered Team Viewer is free <laughs> and works just as well. So I still use the free version of uh, log me in as well as Team Viewer. Do you? I use team, work, yeah. team Viewer at work. It's uh, invaluable. So I I, I I have a question that I'd like to it's ask. It's not bad in my that's left, that I, I'd have a question that I'd like to ask everybody here, um, just as a segue, Jess. Uh, how many of you really enjoy this uh, open Q&A type deal? Okay. Would you, would you like to see it happen more often? Yes. That's pretty resounding. I don't know. What? I missed something here. What? Ed's just asking folks if they'd like to see more Q and A's like this. Oh, send your hand. <laughs> Hey, no firing off fire guns in this building. Okay, so well, what would you say if I told you we were um, considering doing them twice a month? One early in the morning for people that are on, like, say, 8 a.m. SL time, and another one at, like, 1 or 2 p.m., um, you know, something like that. Stuff like this. this is a pretty big one. This is a pretty big one, um, but uh, they'll be similar to this. Well, you haven't done one for like what six months? Well, we did the office hours, right? It's probably more than that. You guys missed the office hours. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Um, actually, it's. I think it's been must be a year. Did you do any of them when I was gone? Mm, don't think so. Then it's been over a year. Yeah, it's been a while. And, you know, the lack of office hours is my bad. Um, and I wanted to call a Q&A, which was sort of an office hour. We were supposed to have an office hour last Saturday, but stuff came up, real life, all that stuff, and I wasn't able to do it. Um, and uh, But I kind of like the Q&A thing better. It's less formal. Um, it's not like this big television show thing. Uh, and if we can, as long as we don't fill the region and there's still room for people to come in, if we do them more often, um, I like it. So, Ed, that's pretty resounding. Everybody likes the Q&A. Okay. So, um, so, twice a month we'll do them. We'll do, uh, uh, we'll do one, say, the first Saturday of the month or something like that, or the second Saturday of the month, and then do it again on the fourth Saturday of the month. And we'll do one in the morning 
uh, around 8 a.m. SL time. We'll do another one in the afternoon around 1 or 2 p.m. SL time. Um, that way we can get people from different time zones coming in. I, I think weekends are probably the best bet, Jen. Um, uh, not, not only for the users, but, but for getting our uh, uh, team members up here. Like, we, we're going to want developers to come out to these. Okay? However, I do want to point something else out. Okay? Why? Because we love our <laughs> developers. Even when we the argue with you and disagree developers. with you, Tanya, we love our developers. Okay? Uh, but I also want to point out, um, we do an open Q&A after all of our classes, folks. So if you've got questions and you can make it to one of our classes, um, come on out to a class. Y you might learn something. Um, we have regulars that come out to our classes all the time that learn things before the classes, during the classes, after the classes. Um, let it throughout the uh, class schedule. Um, come on out. And we'll be doing more of these. I, I think we'll probably start the second week of September if uh, I can arrange it with the devs. So as far as attendance uh, from our team, um, it's going to be sort of sporadic, just like this was. I didn't know who was going to show up and who wasn't. And uh, there, will be, there will be QAs without me. There will be QAs with me. Um, I don't have all the answers. In fact, I carry very few answers, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, because I can't code, I couldn't code if my life depended on it, unless it was LSL, and even then it would be, it would make a good little game show, because you wouldn't know if I would live or not. Um, but, uh, so if we can get more devs, uh, devs are shy. We got Tanya up here, we got Cinder up here, who just crashed and is coming back in. Um, Cinder, the scripts are back off again, so you can, or on, so you can sit down. Um, and... I think devs don't realize how much how much you guys like to see your devs. Oh, and we got Kata. Oh my gosh, I forgot Kata. How could I forget you? You know how I forgot you? Because you're sitting on the me. floor. I can't see you. It's terrible. There you go. Kata's got a skirt. I'm looking up your skirt. Jessica only sees me because I'm wearing... You're naughty. <laughs> Pink. <laughs> you're lucky I went clean so, before I came over. It would be awesome if we had, you know, more devs show up more frequently and um, so anyways we're still not done uh, other topics Cinder is here a lot of people um, might know how, how many of you use open sim at all good because the compatibility in Firestorm with open sim um, is almost entirely due to Cinder Roxley's efforts. Um, and if you guys have any open sim questions, that's why she's here. And um, and in fact, some of you may know there is a open sim uh, conference coming up, uh, September seventh and eighth, right? Cinder seven and eighth. Um, anyway, Cinder and I are going to be. Sorry, what's that? I have no idea. I think it's September 7th. And s you know what? I'm going to look it up. Give me a sec. Open Sim's an alternative grid, Kara. Right. Open Sim is another grid. Uh, well, it's, it's a lot of grids, actually. Second Life is a grid, right? It's a virtual world platform for a virtual world platform. There's the keyword. Um, Second Life is not the only one that exists. There are others. They are not as uh, populated as Second Life is because they started after Second Life and Second Life really courted the market back then. Um, but there's a conference coming up. There's the link to it. Um, and if you guys use OpenSim, you might want to come. Um, Cinder and I are on a panel along with uh, somebody from Kakua is going to be there, somebody from Singularity. It's basically a, a panel discussion about OpenSim from developers of third-party viewers. Um, and uh, I'm not quite sure how that's going to go or what's going to be said or, or what, but um, sounds interesting. And uh, 
it is on the yeah September seventh and eighth, and ours is on the eighth. And I think it was I don't remember what time it was at. Anyway, um, I'll try to post information about that as we get closer to it. Uh, yes, uh, um, yes, it looks mostly the same, except that it, uh, in, except that most grids are technologically behind Second Life. Uh, no, you can't take your inventory. Um, only, as Frank says, only self-created inventory. And uh, no, you can't teleport from SL to other grids, but other grids, I believe, allow, but uh, some of them allow teleporting amongst themselves. Yeah, hypergrid. Cinder, do you want to talk about that quick? <laughs> I have autocomplete turned off. Sorry, Peter. Uh, I was autocomplete. So, um, uh, some of the open sim grids have a thing called hypergrid, which allows you to teleport from one grid to another grid to another grid. Um, uh, unlike Second Life, uh, so open sim is is a little bit more. Um, is the word sharing kind of than uh, Second Life is, or than Linden Lab is open? Yeah, thus open sim. Ha! Uh, it's also open source, and that's why we like it. That varies from one grid to the next. Some grids, uh, some open sim grids like in worlds, in worlds and Avination do have economies. Uh, other open sim grids like OS grid and LF grid don't. Instead, uh, basically everything there is a freebie. Uh, to some extent, you get what you pay for. However, I have yet to find a tiger avatar. Period. Let alone one that works that looks worth a darn on any open sim grid. So uh, for those of you who want to or are interested in uh, coming to the conference, um, I'll post some information about that up on our blog as we get closer and as I get more information about it. I don't know if I'll send a group notice. Um, just keep an eye on the login screen. If you look at the login screen on Firestorm when you log in, um, it uh, has a, a little thinger there that gives you the most recent blog posts, and just keep an eye on that. Uh, uh, can you I want to take that? One? Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. Je Jessica and I were sitting around in my skybox one night, with my uh, SL son, Maybon, who was in the crowd. I'm not sure if he still is. I'll, I'd have to look. I think he is. Uh, nope, he appears to be gone. But uh, we were sitting around having a chat, and he decided he was going to go off shopping so that Jess and I could talk shop. He went to three different regions, and he was talking with us on all three regions. Voice does that on occasion. Uh, we've had people come out to our classes who have left our classes and uh, got to partake in the entire after class um, Q&A session while they were miles and miles and miles away, well, thousands and thousands of meters away from us in, in SL. Um, so, uh, yeah, voice doesn't always connect properly or disconnect properly. Um, it, it's a rather strained animal. <laughs> so expand a little bit on that. Um, so that book uh, has been around since forever, uh, along with a lot of other books. And there are uh, people who have taken advantage of that book 
to um, be able to connect to voice while not even being in the region you're in, but they can connect to the voice channel in the region you're in, and they can listen to you, and they will not show up on your who's talking or who's speaking list, the speaker list. Uh, they will not show up on radar. They will not show up. And as far as you're concerned, you're having a private voice conversation with your friend right next to you. But there is somebody there. They could even be recording it. And I've had this happen to me plenty of times. Um, do not ever, ever take for granted that you're on voice, you know, with just your friend and nobody else can hear because they can. There are griefers with the technology, which is not that advanced, uh, who can do that. Voice has always had um, security holes in it, and those are not, they're not the fault of Linen Lab. Um, like I said before, Voice is owned by Vivox and run by Vivox. And it's up to Vivox to fix these types of issues. But um, whether or not those are fixed in this new version of Vivox uh, is yet to be seen. Uh, don't know yet. Yes, yes, Civix, it does. This is specifically okay. voice. Yeah. There is no such thing as privacy in Second Life. If you think there is, you're fooling yourself. Um, there just is no such thing as privacy in Second Life. Well, but if you're having a voice conversation through an IM window, uh, that's different. Um, that's between you and your friend or whoever you're having that conversation usually. with. Usually. Yeah, don't don't count on that. Don't There's don't <laughs> trust Vivox is secure in any fashion yeah. whatsoever. Use Skype or something. And yeah, this is the internet, so understand it. As yeah, well. use Skype and let Microsoft listen to you. And yeah, there's there's actually no way of getting away from the NSA, so you can't really make that a factor. Oh, OTR. OTR. Okay, let's talk. Let's go there. I'm gonna go there. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go there. Wow, that's um, such a pointless thing now. So the thing with OTR uh, is that we have relatively good reason to believe that um, Linen Lab cracked OTR. Before we even forked Phoenix, before Phoenix even was started. And in fact, if you're having OTR conversations and you think Linden Lab can't see it, the fact is, probably they can. We don't know this for sure. OTR is, is uh, an acronym for off the record. And that is a, um, actually, Cinder, the floor is yours on this, because that's a topic right up your alley. And I think Cinder's going to type this. Yeah, it's encryption. It's encrypted IMs. Super secret spy stuff. So, right from Cinder, um, OTR has apparently never been secure. And and I'm just going to say for the record, we didn't do it. <laughs> OTR was implemented back in Emerald and Phoenix just when we, you know, did the fork of, of the Emerald code base, we took OTR and, and we thought for the longest time that it was secure and, and now looking back, we don't think it actually was. Um, so people have been asking for OTR in Firestorm. Cinder, keep going. I saw you typing. Finding something that would work in Second Life is is highly problematical. Zareth, if your paranoid friend really wants their conversations to not be seen by Linden Lab, then maybe they should be talking outside of the SL platform. That'll do and then it. They on, yeah, then they only have to worry <laughs> about the NSA, right? Well, and Google. <laughs> Did anybody talk about the key exchange? Well, that's probably not layman terms enough. But um, I keep, there we go. Uh, what Cinder just said. And there's a related is, issue in, in, in that... Uh, the, the whole basis of cryptography is that 
you and the other person use a secret something, a, a magic key, a, a cookie, something that allows you to encode and decode each other's messages and theoretically lets nobody else do it. Problem is you have to exchange that key in order to be able to communicate in the first place. And you can't do it through Second Life because, you know, if you're trying to hide it from Lunar Lab, Lunar Lab intercepts the key and presto, they have access to everything. No, it, it doesn't so, work because it's a, it's a public key that you sign with and well, it's the private key you need to decrypt. Well, and you okay, but, only you store your private you, key. Hang on, Connie. Sure. So at some at some point, you know, you you have to you have to deal with it with this key business, and you have to either, you have to get to the other person one way or another. Um, and so you either send it through Second Life or you set up a you send it directly. Well, except if you set up to send to exchange, you know, to authenticate yourself directly and. The details are important. But if you set up to authenticate yourself with the other person directly, then guess what? You just revealed your, your real life and, uh, IP address and possibly other information to that person. So you can have, you can have uh, an encrypted conversation, except you just gave away who you are to the other person. You don't, may not want to do that. Or you exchange it through a path that, uh, it's, is itself insecure. So, you know, you can't get there. The key exchange on um, the Emerald OTR was done through using the message field, the unused message field on, um, I think it was a typing notification, or one of the unused um, I think it was start, channels like start that. Typing or yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've played around with systems that, that do that as well, and the um, Linden request teleport feature actually does something very similar. Not the Linden teleport feature, the one that's being currently um, contributed to the Linden upstream for request teleport. The In layman's terms, um, the OTR implementation that was put into Phoenix, it was put in Emerald originally that Phoenix had, uh, was not actually keeping anybody secure. Uh, we've had a lot of people asking when we're gonna, if we're going to put it in Firestorm, when will we put it in Firestorm? The answers are um, yes, yes, <laughs> we're going to put it in Firestorm at some point. Um, but we've got to find, if we're going to do it, we better make sure it works. Uh, because otherwise we're giving people a false sense of security. Um, so Cinder has actually been sort of working on that as a sort of a kind of a, a low, lower priority um, uh, kind of a project, but it's it's in the works. Gee, you can always do it the way uh, Emerald did it originally before the OTR was done. Ha ha! If anyone remembers that. I'm just in another window uh, looking for a video for Amber, if you guys can sort of take over. Uh, Pantera threw her a link. To the oh, did Pantera page. find it? Yeah, threw her a link. Oh, to wonderful. Oh, thank you, guys. So, okay. j just, j j just as a slight off-topic again, well, not really off-topic, because there is no off-topic here, is there? If you need help with anything in the viewer, um, click on the little question marks on the floaters. Come on, there's help built right in. You, you, you want to see what videos that we have available to you? Go to your content menu. There's a link to our YouTube page there with videos on all sorts of things, including the quick preferences. Um, there's so much help built into the viewer, folks. Um, I, I'm becoming speechless. Uh, 555, five, five, uh, this is actually being recorded. Um, not Probably not professionally recorded like our office hours have been, but um, it'll go up on uh, YouTube, and I'll make a blog post once it's up on YouTube, um, which will basically give a summary of, of uh, what went on here. So. 
Uh, there were other things I wanted to talk about. Um, okay, let's talk about the... Uh, okay, so some of you may may recall or have read somewhere uh, Oz Linden saying that there was something like somewhere 1,800 different viewer channels, versions of viewers out there. Um, Firestorm and Phoenix weren't uh, a minority of them, 1,625. Um, there's a lot of Phoenix versions out there, and there's still quite a few Firestorm versions out there. But that number is diminishing as people are updating server-side appearance, because they kind of have to at this point. Um, but we don't want that to happen again. We In the past, um, and I guess I'm sort of to blame, uh, in the past I haven't wanted to force people to update. Um, and it's because we have people on older systems who just can't update to the newer stuff. We're at a point now where if you haven't been able to update, then you're just out of luck. And that is beyond our control. Service side appearance is here. Um, it's not in Phoenix. It's not going to be in Phoenix. Um, and we can't magically put it in old versions of Firestorm. Um, and so if you can't update, I'm sorry, I really feel bad for the folks who have old PCs. Uh, but, you know, not a lot we can do. Um, but now that we're here, now that um, all of our old versions are being slowly eliminated from use, uh, we're going to start a new um, process. Um, as you know, we have the ability to block Firestorm. Uh, we have the same ability for Phoenix. We, we can block uh, specific viewer releases if we need to. We've only done it when we needed to, um, and mainly because it's a huge inconvenience for you guys, especially if, you know, you've got a show to do in five minutes or 20 minutes and you go to log in and suddenly your viewer is blocked and you can't log in and the time it takes you to go and download a new version and get into it and get to understand it and stuff, it's a real inconvenience for you guys. And that was another reason I didn't want to force updates on people. Um, but that's going to change. So uh, the plan is this. Um, I'm, we're going to allow three versions on the grid at any given time. So let's say version 1, then let's say we've got version 2, and then we release a version 3. When we release version 4, we are blocking version 1. And when we release version 5, we are blocking version 2. Do you guys understand? So at any given time, there will only be allowed to have three versions on the grid. And we will not, not only will they the other ones not be supported, but they're blocked. They're gone. Um, and if you are on an old version, it's in your, your advantage to stay up to date. It really is. And there's a lot more reasons than just um, support uh, that we're doing this. Um, Linda Lab is pushing a lot of advances in Second Life. Surface side appearance is a biggie. Um, materials and other ones. A lot of really cool stuff coming. Um, a lot of stuff still in the works that's coming. And in order for these things to be adopted, we need to have everybody on these viewers. We get content creators saying, you know, I, I'm creating this content, but so many people can't see it. And that's because they're on older versions, older older viewers. we got to keep up, you know. And, and unfortunately, um, with the advancement of technology and improvements to Second Life come higher uh, system requirements off of your computers. Um, and that is just a reality of technology, right? It's not us. It's not the lab. You can't blame anybody. It's just going to happen. Um, no matter what you're doing, and it always has happened that way. Uh, so, um, believe it or not, it doesn't take a very, it doesn't take a lot of money to buy a computer that runs really good on Second Life, like 400 bucks, 500 bucks. So, if you've got an old system and you're already having trouble running Firestorm or running some of the viewers that are current and up to date, you might consider putting, you know, 20 bucks a month aside. 40 bucks a month aside. It's not a lot of money. In fact, we spend that much just going for coffee in the morning um, throughout a month. Put that money aside, and when the time comes that you're going to need a better computer, uh, you're going to have the money to do that. There's a lot of people that didn't do that, and they're really suffering now because they can't update to a server-side appearance viewer. But uh, So 
the moral is <laughs> we're going to stay up to date with Linden Lab and we're going to try to do it quicker. We're going to try to have releases out more frequently. Um, and that's the other thing. We've been doing releases on average once every four months. Um, I really want to try to improve that to two months once we get caught up with this next release that is coming for 5.1. So that's that. Questions? Wow, no questions. Anger? Anybody raging? Jess, does that mean I'll get fired when my PC will no longer run uh, Firestorm? No, you'll have to update. <laughs> uh, Sarah, good question. Will we have a warning before the viewer is blocked? Um, kind of. The warning is going to be uh, the message of the day will come up that's saying we've got a new viewer release. Um, and that should be your indication to update to that new viewer release. That's kind of your warning. Um, the other advantage, the other thing we do, of course, is when we when we block the viewer, is it gives us the ability to provide a custom message. So when you go to log in, you get an error message. You can't log in because da 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 da. Um, you know we've got a new release out, and this one is being retired. Um, please update. Here's the link. Um, and that's about as good as you're going to get. It's not as aggressive as Linen Lab. Keep in mind, Linen Lab, uh, by default, I believe, where you can correct me, um, forces you to update when there's an update that minute. Like, you got to do it. We're not really big on that. But um, we might do it like a two or three day grace after release number four before we, we cut release number th one. But um, yeah, so we're going to. We're just going to keep uh, older viewers out of Second Life. Tahiti says griefing uh, seems to be picked up lately. Thousand script prims. And scripts prims dropped on the same. I wish there were more ways to prevent it. Uh, I wish so too. Um, you know, I see, I, I log in for charity events quite often and I see them get griefed a lot. And, you know, it's a charity event. People, you know, what's wrong with you? Um, you know, if the world was perfect. Tanya, Laban's got a good question for you, actually. Tanya would be a good one to teach that, probably. Ah, boy. Um, yeah, introduction to RLV. That, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot about that. Uh, that's one of those things, uh, you know, you, you can look at it for several levels. I assume you're talking about, uh, well, you know, so there, there's RLV from the user standpoint. There's RLV from the... Uh, from the attachment maker standpoint, there's RLV from the furniture builder standpoint, there's RLV from the how the hell do I keep it from locking up my avatar standpoint. Um, I, I, I think we'd be open to having such a thing. It's just a matter of what, you know, what, what are people looking to learn. Um, now, bear in mind that from purely from the pure user standpoint, uh, there's more to RLV than just RLV itself. Um, there's uh, in, there's uh, the the biggest thing is that uh, most RLV, most of what people think of as RLV is actually things like collars and cuffs, and those vary from one maker to the next. So we need to to think about how to go about doing that. But uh, yeah, you know, a, a basic RLV class wouldn't be a bad thing to have, and that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be Firestorm specific because that's not just a Firestorm function. Um, if I could make a suggestion to you, um, do what we've done with the classes, Tanya. C come up with the basics first yourself and do your first couple classes and then um, just change the material to suit and have an open Q&A afterwards like what we have. I, I think it would be a gr greatly appreciated by uh, a lot of the users that use RLV. Okay, uh, Ed, poke me about that uh, offline. Um, I'll see if I can't develop an outline and 
try it on you since you volunteered to get guinea pig. Oh, sorry. I'll get an alt for you to play with. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing on my uh, list, uh, and by no means doesn't mean that you know the Q and A is over. We'll be here for questions for everything, whatever. Uh, figures really would have that. <laughs> really, I don't know how you do that. Um, so, uh, uh, September 3rd. Does anybody know what September 3rd is? No, not the conference. I conference do. is um, the 7th and 8th. September 3rd is a rather important day for this project. Your birthday's on the 3rd? Where did I see that? I saw somebody say that. Sarah just said that. It wasn't. She's already had her birthday. Oh. <laughs> Anniversary! Yes! Uh, the September 3rd is our 3rd anniversary on 2013. No coincidence. Actually, it is a coincidence. But, um, yeah, so that's our, our third year um, uh, running. And uh, so what are we going to do about it? Uh, well, we'll probably have a little party, <laughs> as we do, I have done in the past. Um, and we'll have a, a post about it somewhere. Uh, we won't do a message of the day because we've only got the resources of one region. And if we do a message of the day, that goes out to, you know, 250,000 people. Um, and we can't accommodate that many people in one region. So... Um, if you want to attend, just keep it in mind. Uh, we'll probably do, what do you think we'll do? What did we do last year, Ed? We did a group notice, I think, didn't we? Yep. I believe that's what we did. We did a group and notice we roughly, the an hour it, before, we? Yeah, roughly an hour before we were going to start. We put out a notice and, uh, yeah, we very quickly filled the region. Yeah. So just a group notice fills the region. <laughs> So I guess we probably won't do a major blog post about it. Um, well, we will have a blog post about it. Um, but um, we'll also do group notice and uh, and have a little party, a little dance thing. And, and maybe, I can only say maybe, because at the moment it's still just an idea between me and, and another friend, we might, and I, and I really mean that, might um, have a limited edition... Um, collectible for you guys um, that will only be available on that day. Um, but again, this is purely a might. It's still just in the hey, it's an idea stage. Um, and even if we could go ahead with it, it also depends on whether um, the people who would be providing it are able to develop it in such a short period of time. So it, it's a uh, <laughs> well, it might have matched the hat, Cinder. <laughs> How many of you guys went to the um, SL, oh, geez, the Second Life uh, birthday event? Gosh, what year was it? SL10B, 10 years. Did you guys find the Firestorm um, um, exhibit? It was the same as last year, it seemed. Uh, no, Cinder made it completely from scratch this time. Around. Oh, you mean our thing? Our thing, yeah. I thought you meant. The I, thought the, I thought you meant the whole thing in general. Oh no, that, that's pretty much the same every year. Uh, well, I it, it was different through, previous yeah. years. This last few, it looks like they've just done the just simply put the same build back in place. So, yeah, stay tuned for um, our anniversary thing, and there's all kinds of local chatter going on, which I'm missing, and I think it's important, so I'm just going to try to read back. <laughs> oh, as far as jeers are concerned. Oh, let they me all get jeers. red. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going to find let me, my... Let me blog post about this. Okay, and I'm just going to do a little talk about Jira's. Uh, so, the way this project works, and any other software company in the planet works, is with a bug reporting system. Um, you can't just go to a developer. I had somebody come to me a while back and said, you're the 
project manager, you know everything. Let me just tell you what the problem and you can go fix it right now. No, it does not work that way. And I'll tell you why it works that way, because at any given time we have a pile of things to do and they're sorted by priority. And the way we keep them organized is through JIRA. Um, and we actively, Whirly, right over here, Whirly, is the Jerry queen, and she keeps track of absolutely everything. Every single Jira that is filed, she reads it, she triages it, and she sorts it and organizes it, and she brings it to the attention of the right people uh, who would be potentials to fix it. Um, and if it turns out that it looks like it's a support thing and not like a feature request or something like that, um, she takes care of that too and she puts it in the right place so that it goes to support instead of the developers. But nothing gets done without a JIRA. Nothing. Um, because we need to be able to collaborate. For example, you have a bug, okay? And you come to me and you say to me, here's this bug. Uh, is this a bug or is this something I can fix? And I look at it and I figure, no, it's definitely a bug and I don't know how to fix it. Um, I can't fix it right now because I've got 10 dozen other things I've got to do first. But if you follow JIRA, the way that works then is that all of our developers and all of our support people can go in and look at that JIRA and often do and read it and then we all talk amongst ourselves and quite often we'll have questions for you and we can talk to you through that JIRA so we can collaborate with you we can collaborate with each other and by doing so we can come up with resolutions we can then prioritize it and decide when we're going to be able to try to get it through um, are we going to try to get it through is this a bug we can even fix we don't know but if you're just telling it to me and saying you know I'm a photographer and I've got this problem can you fix it? I can't just ping it off the top of my head and know. It has to be investigated. And the only way it can be investigated is through documentation. It's got to be documented so that everybody else can see it. Because what you're telling me is not being relayed to everybody else through um, through magic, through you know telekinesis. Uh, I can't relay that to everybody. And, and you know how it works when you tell somebody a story and that person tells a story to somebody else and that person tells a story to somebody else and it gets different by the time it reaches the person who might have the answer. And the person who has the answer then says, okay, but I need to know this question from that person first. Well, then we got to go back through all the line of people and then back to me and then i got to try to IMU. It's impossible, really. Jira, there's a reason for it. It's a system and it does work. It, 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 there's, and and there's I'll, the, I'll call on that. Yeah. Uh, people are always asking me about uh, problems with Firestorm on Windows. Um, folks, the only reason I, I only ever run Windows in a, vir in a virtual machine on my Mac, and the only reason I ever do that for, for a second life is because that's the only way I can get voice talking to work. Uh, I'm using it right now. Uh, it drives me nuts. I'm going to log out of it just as soon as we're done here and get back on a good operating system. Um, so, you know, telling me about a problem with Firestorm on Windows is not really going to get you very far because I'm not even going to uh, going to understand what your problem is, let alone be able to fix it. Um, and, you know, as Jess says, uh, things get lost in translation. People need to go back and get clarification. I, having me in the loop is just likely going to screw it up. So best to communicate with the people directly who can fix the problem, and that's what the JIRA is for. So there is the perception that uh, the JIRA is a waste of time. There's too many things on it. Um, and if I just file a JIRA, it'll just get lost and, and ignored and will never get looked at and never get fixed. Uh, and that perception is there because uh, sometimes that happens. And let me just tell you why that happens, because you are not the only person who has a bug bugging you that you want fixed. We've got 250,000 users, and all of them have several bugs each that they would like to have fixed. So... so how do you want us to organize that 250,000 bug reports that we may get from everybody? If, if, if we were to be able to solve your problem just through an IM and go in and just tickety tick 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 fix it up in the viewer and say it's going to be in the next release, it takes time to do that. Um, Amber, <laughs> so I wish we could. Everybody Amber, wants to be first. Amber, it ain't going to happen. Sorry about your luck, hun. It ain't going to happen. Okay? Um, nobody gets first. Uh, there are bugs that just do not get fixed because 
we just can't do it. Um, uh, no, you don't. Have, not with us, you don't. <laughs> uh, Sorry, no, you, you get results in by second us. life. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, since I've, can I jump in? Because I just have Go these to it. paste in. Um, I've written quite a bit on this topic. Um, so it actually shows up in two of my posts uh, to my blog. Um, as explanations of, you know, what exactly is going on when you file a, a bug report or a feature request. And um, when I was writing that, the, the first one of those is more recent. The second one um, is uh, less recent, and I apologize for some of the colors in there because it was before I changed my background theme. Um, but, uh, no, basically everything that everybody already said. Uh, plus, um, I know that one of the reasons that people are sometimes reluctant to file JIRAs is that it does not feel like um, immediate help. It doesn't feel like, it, you know, it feels like you, you, you file something and then it gets lost and you have no idea what's going on with it. Uh, you don't know if people are reading it. So it makes, it, it makes you feel as though you have less control over it than you do when you have uh, a person that you are talking with face to face. Uh, or, well, avatar to avatar. Um, and I think one of the reasons that this misconception becomes so, you know, the, the, the misconception that because you're not getting any feedback on it, nothing's being done about it or, it or it will never be done about it is that we're used to an experience more like what takes place in support. There's a very big difference between the kind of issues that support can help with and the kind of issues that developers fix. The kind of issues that support WIC, uh, help with are real time most of the time. Um, they're often quick to fix. Uh, you know, you, you ask us a question, we ask you questions back, you cooperate, we help you try to figure out what's going on, and eventually the problem gets resolved. However, a development issue, some, or, which will include a viewer bug or something that you want to be improved in the viewer, something that needs code written for it, that's going to take a while. Um, and when I was writing one of those blog posts, I checked the JIRA stats and learned that the average JIRA at the time uh, took 273 days to be resolved from the time it was posted. And that's not unusual, as far as I'm aware, when it comes to software development. Uh, so it's a matter of patience. It's a matter of recognizing how long this process takes. It's a matter of taking... Um, it, it's well. Also, take, keep in mind that when when one would be resolved, several others that were related to it would be resolved as well. Um, so, uh, so it's you know the, they can often get bunched together. But um, uh, but yes, it, it's not a quick process, and it's um, and you know it's just a matter of having to learn patience and recognizing that. Uh, you know, as long as it hasn't been closed yet, it may still come back. You can you can leave occasional fresh comments, but I wouldn't go overboard with that, or you may, <laughs> or you may not uh, um, get responses that you want. Um, but yeah, it's it's not unusual. Yeah, I've probably got issues from two from two thousand eleven or two thousand. Yeah. 11, <laughs> I think, I do too. is when it was first, uh, I've, I've it's got been around since 2010. I've got things that I've wanted changed in the viewer for ages and still not been done. Because there's also other reasons why some JIRAs take longer to resolve than others. You well, may file a JIRA be, um, and have it resolved the next day. It's because there's also priorities, the ease of solving it. Um, it's possible you might file a JIRA that... Uh, involves code that a developer is already at the moment happens to be working in and so it's very easy for them to just go in and oh I can do that while I'm at it and they can boom it's done but then there's also things that seem really trivial and simple to do but are incredibly difficult like removing chiclets for example how many JIRAs do we have from people requesting us to remove chiclets um, and I know Whirly will probably have some absolute exact number <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, lots. Thank you. Um, 
some things are more difficult than others. And, and depending where they are as a priority, depending on the, the capability of doing it, depending on the developers we happen to have available who knows how to do it. There are bugs in the render engine, and we don't have developers who are competent enough in that code to go in and fix it without breaking other things and making things worse. So there are... Even Lab some, doesn't have people competent yeah, in render code. Even Lab doesn't, yeah. Um, you know, Runatai like, so is like that, it, and that's to yeah. a point. And and he's overwhelmed because he's all yeah. they have in, in that in that regard. So him and Geens are it. And Geens and and Exodus is very fortunate to have Geens because Geens seems to have a good grasp on on that area of code, and um, that's an area of code that forever very few people have actually been able to understand. Render pipeline. And nobody so understands get, cache. Yeah, like when we get render bugs, like the black screen and the pink screen issues, that's in the render pipeline, and that is very, very difficult for us to fix because we don't have the expertise in that area. Um, Zion, if I can answer your question here, if I can jump in and ask or answer Zion's question, not likely. Um, quite frankly, the show look at it is quite frankly a drama feature and it really doesn't show what people are where people are actually looking it shows where the camera's focused okay um, if it's possible um, file a Jira maybe it would get looked at maybe not um, uh, but yeah I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the look at feature, quite honestly. Um, Linda Lab tried I've, removing that. I've, I've actually got a big problem with it. Um, because, okay, you ever had somebody uh, been in a group and all of a sudden somebody starts screaming, oh my god, what are you perving my avatar for? You pervert, stop looking at me. Uh, you know, they're usually the people that have gone out and spent thousands and thousands of Lindens making their avatar look great, but they don't want people to look at them. What's wrong with that picture? People are silly. Linden Lab uh, had a developer, I believe he was young and new to the company and wanted to make a difference quickly. And he saw this look at Beacon's thing and thought, what a drama thing that is. And he decided he was going to eliminate it. I can't remember his name and I don't believe he's with the lab anymore. Um, and uh, so he went in and started to try to uh, remove it and then discovered that those lookout beacons are actually necessary um, in order for our, our avatar's heads to move around and for our eyes to move around. That's what those beacons are. Um, and you can't remove them. If, if you remove the beacons, like we can, in our viewers, choose to see them or not see them. And when we're not seeing them, we're still seeing them. It's just that the viewer's not rendering it. Um, but if you remove those beacons, then everybody looks like zombies in Second Life. And so they have to be there. But uh, for the most part, they really are a bit of a drama feature. It, Going it is back, kind of, well, it's kind of a debug, sort of. Going back to what to Letty's dad on um, time to cl average time to close on a gyra, that sounds unusually high because... Um, a lot of there's a lot of um, gyros that remain open essentially indefinitely until they get closed at like the semi-annual duplicate and unactable cleanup that occurs. So it really throws that way off. Oh, there's one other factor since you mentioned that, and that's that a large number of the issues in there are waiting on Linden Lab fix. And there that too. wouldn't have been an easy way to screen those out of collecting that statistic. No, and, and uh, we have a lot in there that are just duplicates of, of a Linden gyro for that exact purpose. Well, duplicates get, oh, duplicates of Linden's gyros, yeah, yeah. it's just all a copy of it. Because there's a few of those, especially with some uh, chewy thing. I agree, I it, gets, it does get marked by Whirly or someone else doing the same thing that she often yeah, does. Yeah, they're still remaining open. Removed, uh, look at beacons. I mean, they're there. It's a crosshair, and, and you can see the person's name over top of it. I'm not sure what you mean by connecting lines. I think that was something in Exodus. 
I, I don't believe we ever had connecting. Like, I, I think what you're trying to say is lines that connect the crosshair to the avatar. We, we've never had that. Yeah, I think that's only something that happens in Exodus, and that was for, um, I think, for, uh, like, anti-cheating. That was the other really useful point of uh, look at beacons for those like combat RPs where it um, you can tell when somebody's cheating by camming around because you can see where they're camming around. Of course, it doesn't really stop it since there's ways of not uh, moving your crosshair, but a pink crosshair does indicate someone is alt camming, so it does sort of help with that. There's a lot of uh, alternate uses for it are quite uh, useful. And um, so, because we're, we're all over the board with, with subjects and questions, um, yeah, we assign uh, some of our JIRAs to should be working on at Linden, um, and that's because it's a bug that um, we can't fix, either because it's beyond our um, realm of expertise, or it's something that requires server-side code. Um, or it's something that if we fix, it'll break something else. Um, render code is often assigned to should be working on Linux because we just can't do that stuff. You know, we're not, a lot of people think we can do everything, but we can't. Um, certainly render code is, is a challenge for us. Uh, so if you file a JIRA and it gets assigned to, if you file a JIRA with us and it gets assigned, it should be working on a Linden. That means we're waiting for Linden Lab to fix it because we can't. And that means it's not in our priority queue. It's, it, it goes into Linden Lab. It also means that there must be a Linden JIRA uh, that is associated and would probably be linked to by Whirly. So that falls into Linden Lab's priority queue. No, I think what we um, what we got from Linen Lab, you know what? I got to give Nick's Linen credit because Nick's sort of set a precedent that has never happened by Linen Lab before, where Linen Lab uh, was developing something that inadvertently broke a third party viewer feature that they weren't even aware of that certainly was not supported, and. Linen Lab actually decided to take some time to try to provide an alternative. It's never happened before. Nix took it upon himself, and as far as I know, on his own time, to provide a hover offset in the um, in the Linen Viewer, which we which we obviously adopted. Um, and like I say, that's never happened. I mean, Nix is got a heart of gold. Nix Linen is he rocks and. Don't expect that to happen ever again, where Linen Lab will inadvertently break a feature they weren't aware of and which they did not support, and then spend time fixing it. Um, it's never happened before. It happened this time, and chances are it probably will never happen again. I would love I've to hear that, that it will happen again. But I, I've gotten that, that a few times, getting Linen Lab to fix something that only third-party viewers were using. Well, actually, like, I guess there are a few things that yeah. have happened, but minor like, um, in comparison to, you know, Avatar Offset. Well, if it's easy to fix, it's a bit easier to get them to fix it again. One of them was uh, yeah. the um, revoking permissions on things you sit on, or just anything that takes your, like, animation permissions. That was something I got re reinstated. It's not anything that does anything major, but it's the one in the privacy options. Oh, why we can't have nice things, yeah. This happens a lot, um, and, and it's become a, it's kind of become a, a bit of a saying of mine. I was just talking about this with a friend today, um, that it, it comes up, this is why we can't have nice things, and there's so many times where we'll have, you know, an idea for a feature that would be so cool. Um, it would be so beneficial to the users, but because it could potentially be used uh, to abuse other users, we can't do it. And and it's or, the same thing as saying, you know, the, the inventor of the pencil is, you know, the, the pencil is such a fantastic, it can also be used to stab people, so we can't do that. 
So we can't have pencils. And unfortunately, in in the software, in, actually, let me just say in Second Life, I don't know if this problem exists anywhere else. Um, it's it's a consequence we have to weigh every time we have something cool to do. <laughs> yes, Kara? Yes, it is. And currently, if you go to a server site appearance sim, you are not going to be able to use upload temporary uploads. Um, well, it's already gone on server site appearance regions. Instead of doing temporary uploads, use the local texture picker. There is a link in the blog to an explanation of how to use that. It does uh, most of what um, temporary uploads did. Uh, this is uh, most people are are although um, although depending on what you use temporary uploads for, you may or may not find it to be an improvement. But for some people, it is an improvement. Uh, temp upload um, is not only a feature that was not supported by Linen Lab. Linen Lab was not aware of it for the longest time, and I believe only really became aware of it. Uh, two years ago, maybe, with Phoenix. Um, and they had a different opinion about temp upload than what uh, <laughs> we had of it. Because the way they see that is that that is a third-party viewer creating a capability to circumvent the Linden uh, uh, uploading system, to circumvent them getting 10 Linden a texture. It's a loss of revenue, and they were pissed. I mean, pissed. Um, but they also had the issue of how many third-party viewers have temp upload, and had they known about it back in the Green Life days, before Emerald even, well, it was before Emerald was renamed to Emerald, um, they, they probably would have put their foot down, but I don't think they knew about it then either. Um, so that's that's a thing of not Linen Lab inadvertently breaking it. They wanted to break it. Um, they didn't go out of their way to break it, but server-side appearance, as it turns out, breaks it, and they were very happy that it does. Um, c can I say something really controversial, possibly really controversial here, Jess, that might get me fired? Mm. Um, the, the, the fact that server-side appearance would break uh, um, uh, the temporary uploads is probably one of the reasons that server-side appearance got the go-ahead as a project. Yeah, that, that's a, a server-side appearance really is a, a major rewrite of major amounts of core code and is a huge risk for an expense for a company to take on. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that was one of the contributing factors for why they decided to go ahead with it. Well, I, I had a the, better, the, I had a better thought on this. The, the bean counters at SL would say, yeah, hey, it's going to generate a little extra revenue, um, so it might offset the cost of actually doing it. I had a better thought on um, the reasoning behind that. Um, it's more likely the reason was why we don't have both simultaneously, like there's no backwards compatibility. The Killing temp upload is more likely the reason why we don't have legacy support still. So, um, <clears throat> Linen Lab, uh, actually, it wasn't Linen Lab, I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it was Valith who uh, developed the local bitmap browser. Uh, it was in Emerald, I believe, near the end. Phoenix had it for the longest time. People didn't use it very much. It is a fantastically useful feature. 
Um, Valus, I believe, I, I hope I'm right. I'm pretty sure it was Valus developed it, gave it to Linen Lab. Uh, we then, of course, adopted it. Uh, in fact, Linen Lab insisted that they release it before we do, as uh, you know, we have a gentleman's agreement. We offer out to every all the other viewers that you know what, if if we see you dump something in your repository of your code, like some cool feature, we promise we won't go in there and take it and put it on our view and then release it before you do. We'll let you have the chance to release it first. And in exchange, please provide us the same courtesy. It's, it's kind of a respect thing. It's a mutual respect thing. Um, and uh, so Linen Lab released that. We put it into Firestorm. Um, and as far as Linen Lab is concerned, uh, that is a perfectly suitable alternative to temp textures. There are arguments that suggest it isn't. There are arguments, there are legitimate arguments for temp textures. Um, and Linen Lab has not denied that there are legitimate arguments for temp textures. But uh, they're not going to bring that back. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah, the big plus about the local textures is exactly what you said, Zion. You can update it on your uh, local machine, have it applied to the texture, to the prim in world, and you can see the update just bang right away. There's no more having to do another temp upload and another temp upload. It will constantly update every time you update it on your uh, computer. One of the arguments to for uh, temp textures is that um, you can upload a texture. It's for collaborative work. If you and a couple other people are working on the same item, you can drag the texture on the item. You're not paying money for it to bring it into Second Life. You can drag it on the texture and those around it can see it. And then you can collaborate with that. Um, Linen Lab's argument to that is go to the beta grid. Uh, a DD, you can upload everything you upload on a DD is free because it's it's uh, kind of like a, a sandbox re a grid kind of thing. And uh, so if you want to collaborate on something, you and whoever you're collaborating with can log into the beta grid. You can do that from Phoenix, or from, sorry, from Firestorm or from the Linen Viewer, and uh, you can collaborate there. You need to get access to a DD first, though. Oh, yeah, that's a problem. And I'm not sure how that works anymore. Supposedly, you'd have to you join the um, SL beta group, and then after some time, the um, sync script will um, pull you over. Sometimes it requires no. I think it was change, change your password. Yeah. Well, no, you had to be in the you had to be in the um, the beta group group in order to have that happen first. But the, the, the originally, but happen, now it's it password. password change. Yeah. Okay, so everyone, I don't think everyone seeked over because it's using like the um, a smaller copy of the Isilon cluster or the smaller old hardware for the Isilon cluster. I forget exactly what what it was. I don't think it was capable of supporting copies of everybody. So, but anyways, um, completely off topic now. <laughs> How do we get into the beta grid? Um, so, but topic? yeah, there's there's a lot of features that uh, third party viewers have that Linen Lab uh, may not necessarily be aware of. Uh, make no mistake, Linen Lab does keep very close eye on our repositories, um, but um, they they can't catch everything. Um, there are a lot more self compilers and users who keep an eye on our and and all the other third party viewer repositories. And I can assure you, they will catch something. But if it's something that's cool for them, they're not going to say anything about it, like temp textures. But at some point, it will get broke. There's also, um, it's not just third-party viewers that are uh, responsible for having uh, things in world that Linen Lab is not aware of or does not support that may get broken by Linen Lab, either intentionally or unintentionally. There are 
a lot of content creators. <laughs> and I'm not going to go into detail on this. I, I thought about it, and I decided against going into too much detail. But there are content creators who are using hacks to create really cool content. And then they tell their friends, other content creator friends, or they put tutorial videos. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm unhappy about what's going to happen to my jeans. Um, and uh, then other content creators start going in and they're using these hacks to make this really cool content. Um, despite Linen Lab having told them this is not supported, it is a hack, and it will most likely get broken at some point in the future. And what's going to happen then in the future, say six months from now, three months from now, um, my genes will uh, just sort of explode and not work anymore. <laughs> And although there may be some guys happy about that, I won't be. And neither will be the thousands of people who purchased the same genes, for example. Um, so just to say that it, it isn't only third-party viewers that come up with ways of making things or doing things that end up getting broken. Just don't worry. Currently, you're naked. Uh, stay sitting on my lap, then. Yeah, you're, nothing, nothing of you is loading. Same with Letta. <laughs> Your body's also missing, but, you know, there's nothing covering it either. Love, I love how mesh works, or doesn't. <laughs> okay, so I think we're running close to the, I mean, we're did, did you read chat? two and a half hours in. No, yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to fire you, Ed. Um, <laughs> I did read chat. Mutter, mutter, mutter. <laughs> Uh, so, any other questions? And, and and people who have asked questions, I'm sure we've missed a billion. Feel free to put them back in chat, and we'll try to do them again. Uh, team viewer is only for sharing your screen or controlling someone else's computer, 55. The EC viewer was a typo. It was an RC viewer. That was in, in talking about the Vivox, uh, the, the new Vivox files that Linden Lab has out in a release candidate viewer. Okay. Uh, Tahiti, so, that book. Let, let me just say, sorry, let me. Okay, go ahead, Ed, and then I'll, I'll answer. Okay. Team viewer is not a viewer for Second Life. It's for sharing computer screens. It allows you to do a remote login on somebody else's computer and play around with their computer and try to fix things. Okay? It's not a viewer for Second Life. Tahiti, I have, um, I think, around about 2,000 friends in, uh, on my friends list. I probably know about... 1% of them. <laughs> but believe me, that bug of your inventory scrolling to the top when a friend comes online drives me insane. And that is a good example of even the project manager doesn't get to dictate what gets fixed first, second, third, and whatnot, even when it drives her bloody bonkers. That's an odd one. But does, yeah, there's the Jira for it um, from Whirly. Does um, does it put like a online next to the friend card in inventory or something? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what causes it. I, I, yeah, it does do that. I don't know if that's what causes it, but um, that's probably. I, I have then, to turn it's... off friend online offline notifications for to be able to use my inventory because at any given time there is always somebody coming online or offline in my friend list. Okay, it's probably that then. It's um, probably triggering like an inventory update, and it's reflowing well, the uh, whole control panel. I mean, the whole that's uh, inventory been, panel. That has been fixed um, many times. We have released with that bug many times, and we have released fixes of that bug many times. And somehow, and that's what we call a regression, folks. When you fix something and then suddenly the bug is there again and you can't explain how it got back or you didn't notice that it was back and we released it. That's a regression. Um, and that's a, a really common regression uh, bug that keeps coming back. I'm one of the few people that's dug into this ever, but 
the whole friend cards concept that happens is just bizarre. Yeah, well, we have copies of all of our copies of all of well, our copies. A friend card is not a calling card. A friend card is a copy of your own calling card that uses the description field set to the friend's UUID, and then from there it changes the name of the card to show theirs. It's kept in a separate folder in the calling cards, and it was being used by viewer 2 to populate the friends list in, in, in various views. Like, really, what? Really? <laughs> I mean, does it make any sense? And it's more complicated than this. No. Because <laughs> you can't read inventory reliably. Too, that's the other issue. Yeah, lots of, you know, why doesn't this do this? Why doesn't it do that? Chances are, if it bugs you, it bugs us too. And it's just a matter of sifting through what we already have on our priority list. With every release that we do, I have to sit down, and I love Whirly to bits. Don't get me wrong. I love her like you can't believe. She is the heart and soul of this project, and we would be lost without Whirly. But every time we get close to a release, when we go to go into uh, release mode, I have to sit down with Whirly in her very cheerful voice um, and triage all of the bugs that we have and decide which bugs get fixed for release and which bugs don't get fixed for release. And we have to go through each JIRA. Yes, we go through the JIRA. Um, and, and we look through, through the comments. We will often try to reproduce it ourselves. And we will spend hours and hours on a Skype call um, just going through triage. And sometimes it takes more than a day. Sometimes it's spread over two or three days. Um, I hate tree I would rather jam bamboo sticks under my fingernails than do jira or than do a triage really I I love whirly but I hate triage but anyway what makes it so difficult is that everything that's there needs to be fixed it, it's they're all important bugs um it's trying to decide which ones are we going to release with and I hate that because I want to release a viewer that has no bugs. I want to release a viewer that's perfectly stable. I want to improve your experience. I want to improve your user experience. And knowing that I have to ignore this bug and release with it because there are other bugs that are just worse, even though this bug is really bad. Um, it really sucks. And it actually gets a bit depressing because it goes out, and then I see people complaining about this bug. <laughs> and it's like, I know that it's there. I wish we could have fixed it. No, don't, no, don't say triage. Don't, 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 don't. Just I'm going to have nightmares of triage. Just, just fire me. I'll get you out of doing triaging. All you have to do is fire me. Yeah, you can do triage. How's that? No, fire you need me. To fire I'll fire me. myself. You, no, you, you need to fire over. me, and I'll get you out of it. <laughs> no. Anyway... With every release, we have to choose uh, to release with bugs, and there are lots of lots and lots of bugs, and some are more than others. And keep in mind, when we do the triage, these are the biggest bugs, the biggest impact bugs that are existing right now, um, because really, triage is tri really does most of the triaging. Actually, she starts triaging weeks before that. And she cuts down like a thousand issues down to something more manageable, like 200 issues or 100 issues. And then she drags me into triaging it. And she loves it. She loves triage. I don't know how you do it. Anyway, we do release with bugs. We are often aware. We will often say that's a known issue. Um, and quite frequently it's because we just couldn't get around to fixing it. If I could find more developers, if you guys want to go pick up some books on C++ and learn developing, I will be happy to bring you on the team once you're able to do it. I'm serious. We need more developers. If I had as many developers as we have support people, uh, you know, we could fix things. We could, like, take over the world. I know on that, um... 
go go get yourself on how to a book on how to write good C plus plus. Read the first few chapters. Throw the book away. You'll never need it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing in the viewer is written properly. Working on the viewer has taught me to loathe C plus plus. Yeah, it's like, how do you do something wrong? Look at how Linden Lab has done it. Or has done it in the past and has patched worked it since. I mean, I speak Python, I speak C, I speak IBM mainframe assembler, for heaven's sakes. Uh, I, I occasionally admit to speaking Perl, although I try hard not to. But C++, after working on the viewer, is something that I will... You know, uh, I, I have told people that they will write something in C++ over my dead body. Or theirs. Pick one. My, my preferred fallback is Lua. I, I've done things in Lua you shouldn't do. It's awesome. So we have... Um, we are going on uh, nearly three hours... This is going to be a really long YouTube video. Um, I think we shall call this one uh, closed. There's less questions coming through now. Um, as Ed mentioned, we're going to do more frequent QAs, starting when, Ed? Uh, I'm looking at the second Saturday in uh, September as a start. Second That's Saturday in September... That's, um, when is that? There's one Saturday. It's the 14th. September 14th? Yeah. Okay, so our, the beginning of our bi-weekly uh, um, Q&As will begin September 14th. So we'll do this more often. Um, try to keep you guys up to date. Sometimes we won't have a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, I think we'll have them here. Um, and it'll be, we'll do a blog on it for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe we can get it um, live streamed somewhere as well if we do end up discovering that there's too many people showing up and not everybody can get in, um, like the office hours were. Uh, if everybody can fit, then that's what we'll do, and we'll just record them. Yeah, we can play greedy. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Really, big thank you for wanting to be informed and taking steps to be informed. You are our favorite kind of user. And, yeah, for those of you that haven't been out to a class, come on out to a class. Oh yeah, classes are fun. I learn stuff all the time. And with that, I'm going to call this to a close and stop the recording. Um, and of course, you guys can stick around, chit-chat, do whatever. Um, the only difference is that we're not recording anymore. I'm probably going to run away because, uh, much like Jess, it's... Uh Past it's going on 7, 7 p.m. and uh, we've not eaten <laughs> and I'm hungry. Yeah. It's long past lunch for me. You guys for making an awesome viewer, by the way. Thank you. That's why we do it, you know. Well, that's why most of us do it, is for the thank yous. Ah, oh, hell with that. I do it just to scratch my own itches. Rest you guys. <laughs> well, devs are, are ulterior motive motivated. <laughs> Yeah, screw you guys. I'm I'm trying to fix this so I can use it. Yeah, Kata Kata has issues um, with looking at it. A lot of you remember people had complaints about um, not being able to read the text early on. Kata fixed a lot of that stuff. Well, I fixed the last major one, which ended up being uh, free type. Uh, I don't know if we're using the build I made or not. So, thanks everybody, and I'm going to run away, and we'll see you in, uh, um, see you in a month, when we see start doing this on a regular basis. Bye, Ed. Okay, hold on.
Yeah, okay, I got some IMs. I gotta cope with. Or class, yeah, class would be good. You guys should just become the Borg and just, you know, assimilate everything. Now fix all your problems. Uh, no, because then we get more problems and we don't want them. Thank you very much. And with that, I go poof. Take care, everybody. I'm gonna head out as well. Oh, if Second Life lets me leave. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to Somebody needs to turn scripts back on before everyone leaves. Oh, that's what? scary. Yeah. Yeah.